Display, 17.3 inch display, so a larger screen than average. Used to be the largest screen in gaming laptops. Now there are 18 inch screens, of course, um, but still a very large screen. And the fact that it's 360 hertz makes it theoretically super good for eSports gaming. Now we have an RTX 4060 in this guy, and that should be enough to play most eSports games at very high refresh rates and uh, FPS. Now it's not gonna necessarily be perfect. Um, you know, you're not gonna get 360 FPS in every eSports title out there quite clearly. We also only have an i5 processor in this laptop. Now the fact that it has an i5 processor means that um, for certain games that are very CPU dependent, we may not see as high of FPS, like games like Warzone 2. And unfortunately, during my setting and testing, uh, Warzone 2 was crashing for some reason. Some kind of bug or something was causing it to crash. I'm not sure why, but we have a ton of esports games in the tests for today. I've added several new esports games to the test just for today um, to give you guys more of a taste of what kind of performance you can get on a $1149 uh, eSports oriented gaming laptop. And I'm honestly not sure because I haven't tested Dota 2 in a while. Um, you know, we got Fortnite, BattleBit Remastered, the new, uh, this game right here is like uh, a $15 lightweight title designed to run on, um, you know, entry level systems or lower power systems well. So it'll be very interesting to see how the kind of performance we get when, in that. Uh, that game, and that's a 256 player gaming experience, a huge map. Um, so that one's gonna be interesting to check out. We got Valorant today, um, CSGO and Fortnite. So those are all of our esports games that we'll be checking out. And then uh, if we still have time, I'll try to get through all of the normal gaming titles that we'll go through as well. Of course, we have our typical test that we do during the unboxing phase. First, we're gonna compare the OR7 versus the competition. I've got a bunch of esports oriented laptops today in the lineup to take a closer look at and see what kind of value you can get at what price point points and how does this uh, slot in with those esports gaming laptops. Uh, we're going to unbox the laptop, we're going to check out everything about the quality control, do a flex test, disassemble the laptop and look for upgradability. Can you replace the RAM? Can you upgrade the SSDs? Um, we're going to check webcam quality and Windows Hello. And yes, this laptop at 1149 has Windows Hello, which is an extremely rare feature at a, under 1200 bucks. So a uh, normal retail price is uh, 1199 right now this is $50 on sale um, and uh, we're gonna test keyboard and mouse and I believe this has a I think this has a per key RGB keyboard I think which again not usually included at this price point so uh, some really nice uh, premium features for 1149 with Windows Hello and a per key RGB. Uh, we're gonna do a speaker test, fan noise testing with decibel meters, test Cinebench R23 and Time Spy, and then move into our game testing today. I'm really looking forward to tech is testing out this Aura 7. I think it has a lot of potential. I did a review of the Aura 17X and that one um, didn't quite have the software configuration that I really like, but this one, I think in theory, at least, should be easier to configure to hit the top end of the power spectrum for RTX 4060, where that was an RTX 4090 in the laptop I had tested previously, so a little bit different. Um, uh, Kalen says, lots of new games added to the roster. That's right. Uh, what's up, everybody? Okay, welcome to the streams. Let's get this started. I'm excited to check out uh, all uh, the Aura 7 today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the competition and a summary. So if you don't know about this, this is my... Uh, me and my teams, RTX 4000 are basically all the gaming laptops that you can buy potentially in 2023. Got basically every laptop that uh, money can buy on here. Uh, over 319 different laptop listings updated daily with sales and uh, whether it's in stock, whether you can order it. Um, we got some basic benchmark data over here on the right for the CPU and the GPU. Some of the data over here is estimated. If it's rounded, that usually means it's estimated. Um, and then of course, if you click on any of these, you can expand it and get pictures of whatever product uh, you're looking at. And in, inside of here, you can still see um, all of the benchmark data and you can see more information about the size and weight and total volume. And then there's obviously, uh, there's also a mini review which usually summarizes my thoughts about the laptop or gaming device in general. Okay, so 
Gigabyte Aorus 7. All right, this one has an i5 12500H RTX 4060, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 RAM, which uh, depending on the quality of the RAM could be pretty good for esports, but it's obviously not as fast as the, as the new DDR5 5600 RAM that we're seeing in some of the newer laptops. But uh, at this price point, I don't think you can really complain about the RAM. 512 gig SSD and a full HD 360 hertz 100% sRGB display, at least according to uh, the manufacturer rated specs. And uh, this gives us a $12.88 CPU performance per dollar and a $9.23 GPU performance per dollar, both of which are good. Uh, the GPU performance per dollar is excellent. The CPU performance per dollar is eh. You know, it's like, it's good, but not amazing. It's like middle ground. Um, it weighs uh, just under just under six pounds, has 99 watt hour battery, and should have some pretty good ports on this Aorus 7. It is a little bit chunky. It's not a super thin laptop, but it's also not that big either because it has very minimal be uh, bezels around the display, which was very surprising to me. I didn't even realize that how minimal the bezels are. Even along the bottom, it's very small. Makes the laptop's overall footprint smaller than you would think for a 17 inch device. Now, speaking of eSports gaming laptops, this guy, the Alienware M18 is arguably the top dog for eSports laptops for 2023, at least in terms of specs on paper. If you're after hitting just the maximum refresh rate possible in like say Valorant or say uh, Dota 2 or whatever your eSport game is, uh, CSGO, um, you know, like you can actually hit very, very high frame rates in those games. And this one has a 480 Hertz refresh rate display. The Alienware M18 and the Alienware M16 both can be configured with a full HD plus, which means 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 480 Hertz, 100% DCI P3 color gamut display. And there is also Ryzen CPU option. So Ryzen 9 7945HX, which is an excellent CPU for certain esports games, or the i9-13900HX CPU, which is the Intel equivalent of the best CPU, uh, or very close to the best CPU uh, for esports games. So um, basically, if you equip the i9 with a 4090 and you get a 480 hertz display, it's supposed to be 100% DCI-P3 too. Um, so ultimately, like this is probably the number one one esports gaming laptop, probably at least if you want, if you're trying to target more than 240 hertz refresh rates. But it also is very expensive, over $3,000 for the M18 and M16. Um, generally speaking, I would try to wait for a sale on these. Maybe uh, it'll come down a few hundred dollars during the sale time. Um, Gigabyte Aorus 15. Now, this is w another competitor in the more budget mid range. Um, eSports gaming uh, price points. The Aorus 15 has the same i5 processor, RTX 4050, eight gigs of RAM, which is not enough. You really need 16. Um, 512 gig SSD. So you have to plan on upgrading this RAM. Full HD, 360 hertz display. So you get the same full HD, 360 hertz display for $50 less. I don't think I'd really recommend this um, unless it goes on sale for say under a thousand bucks, maybe. $899 or maybe $950. Um, but the Aorus 15 is much more portable than the Aorus 7 because it's a 15 inch chassis and it's also much thinner. Um, so, yeah. Now, the HP Victus 16 is another esports option if you're after a QHD 240 hertz display with an RTX 4060. You get a Ryzen 7 7840HS, which should be a better CPU than the Aorus laptops for CPU. Uh, oriented games, at least in theory. Uh, maybe not single-threaded performance. Single-threaded performance might be very competitive. Maybe even the i5 would beat this Ryzen 7 in single-threaded performance, but in multi-core workloads like Warzone 2, I would expect this Vectus 16 to do a little bit better. Now, the QHD 240Hz display obviously should be a very good esports gaming display in theory. I have not tested it, but uh, this one's only 1129, which makes it another very attractive option if you're in the esports 
uh, focused category and you really want to have a QHD 240 hertz display. Um, now with a 4060, you're not always gonna hit 240 frames per second in esports games, but it's gonna depend. Um, maybe certain games like Fortnite or Valorant, you could still do 240 hertz refresh rates with a 4060. I'm not sure, I have not tested that, but uh, it'd probably be pretty close, especially if you turn the settings down to like low or medium or something. Okay, another very good esports gaming laptop is the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. We've got an i7 13700HX, RTX 4060, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and a QHD 240Hz, 500 nits display. So a much brighter display. Should be rated for 100% sRGB. 1349 right now for the Legion Pro 5i. It is on sale. And this one has much better CPU performance per dollar and should be a better CPU for eSports games, basically. Like games like Warzone um, that are CPU bound. That said, the 4060 should be about the same power level as the Aorus uh, 7. So in the GPU bound eSports games like Apex Legends, then we're probably looking at about the same levels of performance. But the fact that we have a full HD display in the Aorus 7, Right, the Aura 7 has a full HD display, and it's not a full HD plus, so this means it's 1920 by 1080. It's just gonna be an easier resolution to run, to hit higher refresh rates more often, uh, and really crank out the FPS, getting you closer to that 360 hertz gaming experience if you're an esports player. So that's like, it's very important to recognize that like you go with the Victus, it has about the same level of power in terms of graphics performance, but it has a QHD resolution, which is a much higher resolution. And it's really gonna take a lot of your frames away if your target is high refresh rate gaming. So uh, if, you're an, uh, if you're an esports junkie and you just wanna play ranked in you know, League of Legends, Valorant, CSGO, Dota 2, whatever, those games are really gonna benefit from having a full HD display, at least in theory. So, uh, depending on the game, depending on the game. Obviously, games like Apex Legends have frame rate caps at 300 FPS. So you can't even go all the way to 360 Hertz anyway, even if the GPU is powerful enough to do so. So we have the MSI Pulse 15. I mentioned this one because it's currently on sale at 1149. You get an i7 CPU and you get a QHD 165 Hertz 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. So if you're an esports player that needs a higher color gamut display, then the Pulse 15 might be a good option to consider. The Asus Strix G17 has a Ryzen 9 7845HX processor with an RTX 4060, 16 gigs of DDR5, 4800, one terabyte SSD, and a QHD 240Hz 100% DCI P3 color gamut display for $1399. So this one, an excellent CPU, an excellent quality display with high color gamut, um, but you're paying kind of a, a bit of a premium price for the 4060, right? Because it's $1,400 for a 4060. You're really, the premium price that you're paying here is for the higher quality color gamut display, which some people are gonna really love. Uh, and then of course, the little bit higher end CPU. So $1,399, and of course, being a Strix, you got all the fancy RGB light bars um, and RGB lighting on the keyboard. So that's nice as well. But overall, I think the, the Strix laptop here is a, an excellent um, value at $1399 for someone who wants that better display quality at the same time. Acer Nitro 5, uh, $969. I keep mentioning this one because it's such a good deal, at least on paper. 165 hertz refresh rate, 300 nits, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. RTX 3070, which is going to be uh, 3070 Ti, which is going to be excellent for esports gaming, and a Ryzen 7 6800H, which is not necessarily is going to be as good as the latest processors for esports gaming, but it would probably be pretty competitive with the Aorus 7's i5 CPU. So we'd have to actually test this and know for sure. But um, 
Last but not least, I want to mention the MSI Katana 15, not because the, the display here is actually very good. The display here is actually not that good of an eSports gaming display. It's got a bit of ghosting, it's only 250 nits, and it's 144 hertz refresh rate, which if you're an eSports junkie, you probably want more than 144 hertz refresh rate. You probably want at least 240 is my recommendation if you can swing it. Um, so if you went the, with the MSI Katana, and what I would actually recommend is buying an external monitor. So I went ahead and looked into some external monitors to give you an idea of if you got the MSI Katana with an RTX 4070, and that's the key that I'm pointing out here, RTX 4070 for 1159 is the most graphical power you can get in a gaming laptop for this price point. So uh, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna get this, and then when you actually play esports games, typically you'd wanna pay, play on an external monitor. So you can see external monitors right now have a wide variety, a wide range of um, pricing. They start, you know, like this one starts at 129. Um, you know, let's see, what is, I'm guessing this is only a 144 hertz refresh rate or something. Um, 165 hertz. And then, uh, you know, but if you wanted to go with a 360 hertz, let's say to get like really high um, refresh rate, then, you know, like this 360 hertz Alienware monitor is 449. So a really great eSports monitor that uh, you'd be able to play games with the Katana or any of these laptops, quite frankly, you could do something like this Alienware monitor or maybe this BenQ monitor. Um, you know, those are both good options. And of course, there are, are all kinds of different options out there. And if you want to go for a, like, say, a 480 hertz refresh rate monitor, you can do that as well. But many esports games probably won't actually hit 480 FPS, especially not for 1% lows. So just keep that in mind that you're definitely not going to be taking full advantage of the refresh rate unless you know that you have a specific game that you're going to be able to hit that refresh rate with that you love and that's your game. So that's kind of my recommendation. But here is an Alienware 480 hertz refresh rate monitor for $799. So that's a very hefty price to pay for that um, the, the privilege of a 480 hertz refresh rate. So, uh, but yeah, you could save money, go with something like the Katana and then get yourself an external monitor or quite frankly, any of these laptops, the Nitro 5 3070 Ti would also be excellent to use for esports gaming with an external monitor as well. So I hope that inter uh, overview was helpful. Let me go ahead and check chat here. Uh, what's up sensors? What's up Clark? How many new games can this laptop actually show at 360 FPS? Probably none with a 4060. Oh, it's 240 hertz. So this, this Aorus 7 is a 360 hertz display. And so yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see what this, what this one can do. Hopefully this one will not have the same power limitations that Aorus 17X had. Had Gigabyte fixed that, by the way? I have not tested it yet, uh, but I would like to test the Aorus 17X and see what, see if they've, updated it at any point. And if they have, maybe do a little bit of an update live stream. Um, Ricardo Milo says, hi, is it possible to get these deals in Europe too? I saw the sites you use deliver only in the US and Canada. Are there any European alternatives? Um, Ricardo, there are some European links on the list, but there are not that many, sadly. Um, so you're gonna have to prob probably gotta just do some your own shopping. Um, if you want to get European deals currently, but we do have some on the list. Okay, so I believe we're ready to move on to the unboxing of the Aorus 7. So I'm gonna put the lap, push this laptop back a little bit. And here we go. What is the GPU wattage for this 4060? It's supposed to be 105 watts, which is, uh, basically the maximum wattage for an RTX 4060. All right, so here it is. We got the Aura 7 Team Up Fight On. It's very kind of eSports logo or <laughs> saying right there. Um, and I would say that this is definitely one of the gaming laptops this year 
that I think is very specifically catered towards eSports players. This laptop does have a MUX switch, so you can increase your um, CPU bound gaming performance by going into GPU only mode, uh, which I think is pretty essential on an eSports gaming laptop. Um, and so that's good, I did check that. And like I said, this has Windows Hello, um, a webcam, a very minimal bezel design, and uh, a per key RGB keyboard as well. So here we go. We got our we got ourselves like a little uh, secondary layer, which is kind of cool. Um, not all laptops have this uh, kind of another shell, and there's the laptop right there. And we got another. Box. I like the texturing on the box here. I've been doing a lot of budget laptops and a lot of them don't have quite as fancy of packaging as this. So it's nice to see, but it's not too extravagant or anything, but uh, it's a nice, nice little upgrade, you know? Um, subtle touch. All right, so we've got a power, we got ourselves a display here. Let's go ahead and check out the power adapter. So this is a 230 watt brick, and that should be powerful enough to power this system at full performance levels. Um, you know, a 4060 and an i5 CPU theoretically should only really need, I don't know, 175 to 200 watts range, probably total system power. So 230 should give us uh, ample coverage. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the laptop. Got this nice foam casement around the laptop. And then we have a, a nice shell and it was, was wrapped really nicely when I first got the laptop out. I wrapped it back up exactly the way it came. And there it is, there's the laptop. It's got a nice finish to it. It feels honestly pretty, like feels pretty solid initially here. Like the initial impressions of this laptop are very good. Um, like there's no torquing this thing. It doesn't feel cheap, but I do think, I don't know. I can't tell what material this is made of, honestly. Um, we got a nice large micro fiber cloth. This is not a, uh, this is like actual microfiber here. So it's a nice high quality microfiber and your, this, this black laptop will need to be wiped down. It does have a tendency to gather fingerprints. So you're going to want to keep this in your backpack or something so you can wipe it down occasionally. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Honestly, when I tap my fingers, fingernails on this, Tapping my fingernails makes me think this is a plastic top lid, but the feel and texture and rigidity of it makes me feel, it makes me think it's metal. So I'm not honestly sure what the uh, material is made of, but if I were to guess, I would guess plastic. Uh, but I, I don't know that for sure. I tried checking their website. And they did not mention that it was metal. And that usually to me indicates that it's plastic. Okay, so here is the laptop. Let's go ahead and do a flex test around the machine. Flex test and quality control. Uh, notice how wide this laptop is and shallow. Uh, many laptops this year going 16 by 10 aspect ratio have instead developed a kind of narrow and deep aesthetic. This is a wide and shallow aesthetic, which depending on what you're looking for, this is really nice. And a big part of reason why it's so wide and uh, wide and shallow is the minimal bezel display. And when you close this, uh, it has a nice satisfying like closing feel to like the, the laptop. And it's got a nice rubber edge around the edge of the display here. Um, 
you can see it right here, this rubber edge just ensures that it gets a nice like airtight soft close to closing the laptop. Uh, and I like that little touch. Not all laptops are as well designed as that. Um, you know, a lot of Razer laptops, for example, have this little rubber edge around it. Like my Blade 18 has this little rubber edge right here. Um, but usually, most laptops don't have this. So I like, I really, I really love to see that, uh, like a little bit of premium des design aesthetic coming into this laptop. So uh, let's go and do a flex test and see how flexy this thing is. No flex at all in the right side. No flex. Min, min, minimal flex here in the middle, but honestly not much. No flex. Let's go to the keyboard. A bit of flex, a strong amount of flex here right in the middle. But I am pressing really hard. Normally you're not gonna press that hard. Um, going through the keyboard, definitely some flex, but not strong enough to where I think it would bother you as a user. And going over the keys here, all of the keys feel good to the touch. None of the keys are making any weird sounds or rattling or are loose. So that's great to see. Let's go ahead and continue our flex test. A little bit of flex over here on the left. Mainly it just feels like I'm pushing down the rubber feet of the laptop. Um, the laptop chassis does not feel like it's bending or flexing really. Okay, a little bit of flex here. Not much, but a bit in the chassis. Uh, basically no flex, very minimal flex. Overall, I love the rigidity of this laptop for the price. Like it's, it feels, a step up in terms of rigidity, which I, I like that. Um, okay, so let's see here, what should we do next? So again, we're gonna go over all of these things here. We've unboxed the laptop, we've checked the power supply out. We've done our quality control test of, and flex test. Let's do ahead and let's go ahead and quickly look at the hinge as well. So this hinge can be opened one with one finger very easily. One finger opening is no problem on this laptop. Um, and overall, I think the hinge could be a little stiffer, but it feels good. It feels quite good. Um, and I generally like this type of hinge design where it's like inset into the, the bottom here and swings in and out. But uh, again, it's hard to predict if the hinges are necessarily gonna last over the course of like five or 10 years. But as long as this is well executed on the inside, it should be pretty good. And this does not go, that's as far back as the, as the display goes. It does not lay flat, which may bother some people, but this is pretty far back. Should be, it should be far enough back for just about anyone that uh, is using this laptop under normal circumstances. Um, overall, seems like a pretty decent hinge. Definitely a little bit of wobble when you let it go, but uh, typing on it and anything like that, no wobble really on the screen, so that's good. Okay, let's go ahead and take the bottom of the laptop off and let me check chat. Uh, Gremic says, looking forward to seeing how much this gets on Warzone 2. Unfortunately, when I was installing and setting up all the games, um, I tried running Warzone 2 just, just to see, you know, if it's going to run and everything. Um, and for some reason, there's some kind of driver bug and Warzone 2 crashes on launch. So some, something's going on with that, um, that game, unfortunately. So I don't know if we're going to be able to test it. I can try running it one more time today. Maybe, um, maybe some update or something fixed it. I don't know. I did try to verify the integrity of the Warzone 2 files. So maybe that fixed it too, I don't know. But uh, yeah, something's going on with the, the files. Okay, so to open this up, you're actually gonna need a Torx T6 screw driver head, okay? So you're gonna need a Torx T6, which is a rare screwdriver head. If you need tools, link in the description to buying an iFixit toolkit, which is gonna have everything you'll need to open this laptop up. Um, if you want to know what that looks like, let me see if I can zoom in on it here. That's what it looks like. I really like opening and closing laptops with the Torx screwdriver set in general because you know 
you can have confidence that it's not going to strip any screws no matter what pretty much so that's the nice thing about the torx the problem is not everyone has a torx so i had to like you know back when i owned oris laptops i had to go buy a special toolkit because i didn't have any torx screws but um yeah the nice thing about the phillips head screws is that the, almost everyone has a phillips head the problem is if you don't have the right size phillips head phillips head screws have a tendency to get stripped out and uh and then you can't even open the laptop or whatever so that has not happened to me in a long time but it has happened to me before like i remember there was this one screw in a laptop that was just like Whatever technician had tightened it before me, he had just like put his whole arm strength into making that thing um, <laughs> like tightened down into the chassis. And man, it did not want to come up. And I like stripped that thing. And then I was like, oh crap, I'm never going to be able to get my laptop open again. And thankfully I went and found a better quality Phillips head that matched the, uh, the screw head and was still able to get a little bit of the side teeth or whatever. And uh, yeah, that worked to actually get the laptop open. But yeah, you really wanna make sure you're careful not to strip your screws if you have a Phillips head. So like I said, that's why I like the Torx, uh, the Torx screwdriver head. But like I said, it, it is a bit of a hassle you know, having to deal with this. Now we do have different size screws on this chassis and this is very important for you not to mess this up. These screws here going into the middle are longer than these screws going into the front. If you put the longer screw in the front and torque it down, you may go through the motherboard or go through some important into the battery or something. Um, so make sure you put the right screw, size screw into the right hole or you will have a not happy day. Um, okay, very nice. We got all the screws out. There's quite a few screws here and there are different sizes for a lot of these different holes. Like these front two are different size than these back six. Um, and these front two are also different size than these middle two. So definitely wanna keep track of which, which uh, screw goes into which hole. All right, it's a problem. Common problem to have in life. <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay. Um, all right, let's see if we can get this thing open. <laughs> Is there gonna be a test on Warzone 2? So, Gremick, I will try to run Warzone 2, but I don't, I don't think it's going to run. That's what I was trying to tell you uh, earlier, because it appears to be bugged. So I was able to get in really easily here in the back, just getting it started. And now I'm gonna to try to go all the way around using the toothpick, which seems to be working pretty well. I suppose in the back here again, we'll pop it open with the uh, little pry tool. And we'll work our way back across. And uh, perfect. Bada bing, bada boom. We're loose. That was actually very easy overall. And I got to mention, into the AM shirt once again today. Link in the description for 10% off if you're interested in buying some high quality t shirts. Bam. Look at that internal layout. This gorgeous 99 watt hour battery. How many laptops that cost under $1,200 come with a 99 watt hour battery? Very few. And that should help with, uh, that should help with getting max juice on the go. Obviously this is an Intel i5 CPU and a full HD display. So as long as you keep that refresh rate down, keep the NVIDIA GPU off, I imagine battery life on this thing's gotta be pretty dang good. Um, 
All right, so quick evaluation of the internals. 99 watt hour battery. We've got left and right audio speakers. And the bottom of the chassis does have little vents over here on each side for these speakers. And these speakers are fairly large looking, at least this whole encasement is large. Though the little tweeter thing on the edge, let me see if I can zoom in for you on the speakers. You know, the speaker here is pretty small, but the overall size of the main body speaker, if that thing is like a subwoofer in the back of that, we might get good quality sound out of this, or that just might be a plastic cover over nothing. I don't know. Um, we'll have to find out how good the speakers are. And we will, we'll do a speaker test here soon. All right, so we've got our SSD here, and I'm not seeing a brand here on this SSD. No brand indication here. I know Oris was claiming they're only using high quality uh, parts for their SSDs and RAM, but I'm not sure what this is. There's, there's no brand on here that I can see. Going around the side here, we've got our battery to unplug the battery right here. Let me go ahead and get a little closer if I can. All right, and uh, there we go, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, we have our extra M.2 slot right here that's open. So easily upgradable double-sided SSD slot available here. We've got our Wi-Fi card over here on the right. which is an Intel AX. Uh, I'm not sure what the model number is, but it's an Intel AX to something. It's such tiny font there. Can I zoom in on the video? It's like 211, I think. Hold on. AX. 210 NGW. So AX210 Intel Wi-Fi module. So uh, another nice nicety that it's not a MediaTek super budgety Wi-Fi module. Um, then we've got our RAM. Let's see what model of RAM. It's a crucial RAM. Wow. Uh, crucial RAM usually uh, considered a higher end RAM stick. And uh, let's check out the details on the RAM. I'm not gonna unplug the battery. Just move through this more quickly. So you can see we have DDR4 3200. It doesn't say if it's like a 1R, 1XR8 or 1XR16, but it is double-sided. So it is probably the faster version of DDR4 RAM, uh, if I were to guess. This is DDR4 3200 in terms of overall speed, but Crucial RAM usually has faster timings than average, and depending on the game, this actually might have better eSports gaming performance than some DDR5 4800 or 5600 RAM. I'm not sure, that would actually be interesting to test, but not sure if we'll ever have time for that. Um, okay, let's take a look at the cooling systems. So, our heat pipe layout is pretty interesting. We've got our CPU here with three shared heat pipes. Our GPU here has the VRMs covered with a metal plate, a dedicated heat pipe just to the GPU, and then, of course, we have our three shared heat pipes. Um, so this GPU should have pretty ample coverage like I imagine the cooling on this system is excellent for the amount of wattage that this system's going to pull. But let's find out in our actual test. That's my prediction. As long as they did a good job on the paste, the CPU and GPU paste, I'm thinking our temps should be in a nice range. Um, we'll have to find out, or we, we will find out very shortly. And we have two large fans. Says we've disconnected. I don't know. Let me know stream if if anything got if it's not working anymore. 
Um, all right. Very, uh, very nice. Okay. I think we're good to move on to uh, replacing this cover. Uh, also, I want to point out that we've got some really nice ventilation. Look at the ventilation. There's a, you, can, you can see all the way through to the laptop underneath. So there's going to be a lot of airflow going into this laptop, much more than your usual uh, laptop. Like my Blade 18 has the, like little ventilation square, little ventilation square. Like this has a ton of ventilation on the bottom, um, which again should hopefully help with temps. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to grab this back and put it over here again. I'm just going to pop this back and down. Going all the way around to ensure that we are popped in in a full 360. Including if there's any pops in the middle area, I did not see any. All right. It's time to screw the screws back in. Again, make sure those, the right screw goes into the right hole. Yes, I did say that. Okay. There are quite a few screws on this laptop, but I gotta say overall this laptop, pretty easy to take apart and put together. I'm pretty sure that this chassis is plastic, not metal. Based on how lightweight everything is. But yeah, it does feel like high quality material though. And the other thing I'll say about the internal parts is that for a laptop that's priced at $1149, we are seeing higher quality than average um, internal RAM. You know, crucial, official crucial RAM in a laptop is something we've almost seen never in 2023. You know, we're almost always seeing SK Hynix uh, RAM. I'm not saying SK Hynix is bad by any means, but, uh, you know, a, a lot of MediaTek Wi-Fi cards, which in my opinion are not usually as good as Intel Wi-Fi cards. Um, so, you know, I like, I really, I love to see that they're putting, putting in, I guess, a few extra dollars into the quality of the internal hardware. Um, especially in a budget-ish category, right? Because that's the main thing. Like, I like, I would expect higher-end internals in like a two thousand, three thousand plus dollar laptop. But for eleven forty-nine, you usually you don't see those kinds of internal uh, brand names. Typically, like almost all of the Acer Nitro series, for example did not have the, they almost all had MediaTek Wi-Fi cards other than Intel. Okay, cool. All of those screws are put back together. It's time to take a look at the keyboard and mouse. Uh, and I'll go ahead and get the laptop turned back on. You know, one thing I did not show is how long the cables are. Um, and the, I'd say the total cable length is about uh, 10 feet with the power adapter cable actually being a little more than six feet and the, uh, the main power cable being like four and a half or so. Overall, it's a pretty good size. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and see if Windows Hello is working. There we go, Windows Hello logged me in right away. Um, it took about like, I don't know, a second and a half. 
Okay, so taking a look at the keyboard and tr trackpad here, okay? Um, time to take a detailed look at the keyboard and the trackpad. Let's see here. So if you want to adjust keyboard brightness, you got to use FN plus the space bar. You tap it three times to make it brighter, brighter, and then turn off. So brighter, brighter, off. So that is the brightest, that, that is currently the brightest keyboard setting right there. And uh, let me go ahead and pull this thing over here. and take a detailed look at this keyboard. Uh, this is the same keyboard layout that Oris has had on their laptops for so many years. There has been almost no update to this keyboard layout, which is very interesting to me that they've basically kept it the same. I think the primary thing that I would say could be a nice improvement would be if they took these arrow keys and separated them down, like brought them down and then made this shift bar go all the way over. Um, some people that are typing over here that use right shift as the key, they might end up pressing the up arrow key. Um, and it makes it the arrow keys just easier to find if they're down a little bit. But I mean, ultimately this is a great layout for typing and user experience because you get a full size number pad that's not cramped. It's like very nicely spaced. Um, and let's go ahead and zoom in on the keys here so you can see what the functionalities are like. So uh, on the escape key, we've got a uh, basically a max fan speed button. Then we've got a sleep on F1, Wi-Fi off, brightness down, brightness up, uh, your LCD monitor switching. So if you want to switch between different monitor plugins, um, then... I believe F6 is at lock. Yeah, F6 is to lock the laptop. F7, mute, volume down, volume up. Uh, lock your touchpad, disable touchpad, airplane mode. And then F12 is an AI button, which, uh, yeah, Oris has been kind of pushing AI. I think that's just a bunch of marketing BS. Personally, I don't think that it actually is any helpful. I have done some tests in the past um, it's no, it's, it's less helpful than just manually setting your fan profile and your power limits as a user. That's what I'll say. Um, if you know what you're doing, if you've no clue what you're doing, then probably the AI will probably give you a little bit more performance than just keeping it in normal balanced mode. I'll put it that way. Um, but if you know what you're doing, you should be able to get more performance out of it than, than the AI chip will give you. You got a pause button, a delete button that alternates as uh, insert and break and print screen. And I'm going to log in there. Uh, you get a home page up, page down and an end key. So you get dedicated home and page up, page downs. These are a little bit of an odd position, but, uh, but at least they have dedicated keys for those. So if you do a lot of typing, you can easily memorize where those are for quick taps. Um, and then you have your full size number pad as well with all of your divide multiplication plus minus and enter key. So I, I, I do, I love the functionality of this keyboard overall. Let's take a look at this glass touchpad. Again, a nice premium feature for an $1149 laptop. So this glass touchpad I think is a good size but is not as big as some of the newer uh, designed models. Uh, like I think some of the newer design models would take it another half inch along the top and maybe another half inch along the side. But uh, this is very similar in size to previous Oris laptops, which has never been a problem. It's big enough to do three or four finger gestures pretty easily. And I've got pretty big hands, but uh, yeah, the click feels good. Uh, maybe like, you know, it's, it's like your average gaming laptop click. Uh, but more importantly, since it's glass, it just feels more premium to use um, from a touchpad perspective. Uh, which again, you know, I've done quite a few budget laptops in the last month or so, and like half of them had plastic touchpads, including some of the more expensive laptops like the Legion Pro 7i um, has a plastic touchpad. Nice to have a glass one in a $1149 laptop. Okay. All right, so that's... That's the overall uh, laptop design. We've got, uh, let's see here, what else we got? So 
Uh, let's take a look at the keyboard backlight. It's one area where I think this laptop kind of struggles. The backlight is per key RGB, but it is not particularly bright. Um, like it's fine in a dark room. It'll definitely illuminate the keyboard enough, but like this is not super bright, right? Like, like I can clearly like in a, it's a dark room now, right? I turned the lights off. I can clearly read and see everything. Everything is illuminated quite well, but I would say that, um, in terms of brightness intensity, it could be massively improved. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that I would say. Now, controlling this is gonna be in the Gigabyte Control Center. If you want to control this keyboard, you can go to, uh, you click on the laptop, go to General, go to RGB Fusion. And here is your keyboard key controls. And you have a bunch of different uh, pre-built, got eight different pre-builds here. Um, let's go ahead and cycle through those. So we've got RGB, RGB pulse, RGB wave, static, pulse, rainbow wave, cycle, custom. Um, interesting. Huh. Very interesting. So uh, the, in custom, this is what you get. You just get three different colors. Um, and it makes me wonder if this is, this seems like a three zone keyboard, not per key RGB, if I'm being honest. Like maybe, like I thought the website said per key RGB, but the way that this is acting makes me look, think it's a three zone, right, left and center. Um, and in the control software here, I'm not seeing per key functionality. I'm seeing more like three. So this is the cycle mode. This is pulse. This is rainbow wave. All right. And you can change the speed to go faster, slower. If you want, you can do a static color, including white. If you just want to go more of a professional look, uh, RGB wave, which is not all of the colors. It looks like it's more like blue, purple, neon, RGB pulse. It's kind of just the same thing as regular pulse, uh, RGB. That's, that's what RGB is. It's just multicolor. So, um, pretty sure this is a three zone keyboard, not per key RGB. Well, this is what you get when you get hands on with the device, you get uh, a better idea of what it's about and, and everything. So, um, overall, I like the feel of the keyboard. I've done a lot of typing on these Oris style keyboards. It might feel just a, a little bit cramped compared to some, and it's not a mechanical keyboard. It, it does feel, I think, better than a membrane keyboard. Um, and the functionality on this keyboard is good. Overall, it's a decent keyboard. Nothing special really, but it's highly functional and will work quite well for most people. Um, okay. And I believe, uh, I believe that, uh, Oris also advertises something about like anti ghosting per key rollover or something. So that way you have better gaming performance for pressing the keys on the keyboard. Uh, minor upgrade, basically, in my opinion, not a big deal at all. Uh, unless a keyboard has a real problem with it, then yeah, that could be a problem. All right. Uh, Okay. Clark says there should be a separation between the number pad and the rest of the keyboard too. Uh, yeah, some people would like that, but uh, what you use, you use like the your finger and you feel for the the F the, the five key here, and the finger uh, the five key has a little uh, ridge on it. The five key has a little ridge here, and uh, that's how you can know you're in the center of the the number pad. Um, kind of like how the F and J key. You know, the F and J keys also have the little ridge on those keys as well. Um, okay, cool. So there's your overview of the keyboard, trackpad, all of that. Um, let's move into webcam quality. Uh, 
All right, so webcam quality is what you would expect in a gaming laptop. Is bad. Is not very good. Um, the details in this webcam are particularly mediocre. Uh, I can see very little detail on my hair. So look at how non-detailed this is. This is super, uh, super low resolution here. But this is also an IR camera for Windows Hello. So Windows Hello uh, is something that's very nice to have and it, it oftentimes will make the camera quality worse than average. Okay, so if I go ahead and lock it and do a little test here with Windows Hello, it, it, it picks me up and logs me in very quickly. Only, you know, a second or two there. Everybody Grass with the $5 Super Chat. On your video with the Strix Scar power cable runs parallel to the side vent. Do you think it can damage the cable with the hot air that it vents? Unlikely, because it's not going to be that hot of air. Um, yeah. Is this a 17-inch screen? Yes, Spafo. This is a 17-inch screen. Um, okay. Uh, Austin wants to know if the Nitro 5, with the i5, 144 hertz, IPS, 4050, at 899 is a good deal. I think it's a pretty good deal at 899. If that's a laptop that you're interested in, it's not a bad deal uh, at 899. I think it's a very good deal. Um, okay, cool. So there's our webcam quality. It's time to move on to our display test. Let's find out how bright this display is, what the NIT's color gamut is. Uh, and the overall brightness. Hey, you got a shot up in the back of my head too. Wow. Oh, we have not analyzed and reviewed the ports. Actually, let's do that first. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the ports on this guy. All right. Um, now, the ports on this laptop, I think are probably an area of potential weakness. Let's take a look at what we got. All right, so on the right side, uh, well, first here are the tech specs for the laptop. All right, so here's the tech specs from Oris's website. On uh, It says we have HDMI 2.1, that's excellent. It has a mini display port 1.4, that's excellent. The USB-A on the left is 3.2 Gen 2, that's excellent. Uh, the USB-C on the right is 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, but it's not Thunderbolt 4, even though these are Intel CPUs. Um, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A, and then an audio combo jack. Okay, so that means we have only three USB-As. I would have really loved it if this mini display port here had been a USB-C. So let's go ahead and take a look at these ports uh, in real life now. All right, so on the right side, we have our headphone port, headphone combo port, USB A 3.2 Gen 2, which is, it's nice that these are both uh, like the latest ports, but this could be Thunderbolt enabled, which would have been really nice. Um, but at least you do have a one USB C on this laptop. Uh, overall, the ports, yeah, not amazing. All right, that's definitely true. Um, no denying that ports here are a weakness on this machine. Um, most likely, most users are probably going to want to get like a, uh, like a USB-C dock of some kind to expand the ports uh, if you're going to be doing like a docking situation at your desk or something. Um, okay, so an upward-facing Ethernet port. I like that. Easy to take this out if you need to take this, unplug it. HDMI 2.1 for high-quality display output with a mini display port 1.4. Again, high-quality display output. And then another USB-A 3.2 Gen 2. So that's it. There's no ports on the back of the device. Look at that. No ports on the back of the device. We just got this kind of reflective coating Kind of like the bicycle reflectors here is what this is, uh, I think. Um, not particularly fancy, but this does not illuminate as far as I can tell. There's no illumination coming from there. It's just reflecting. All right. So there's the ports overview on this laptop. Um, let's move into our display test now.
Dead Beats, welcome to the live stream. Um, I mean, Clark says the power port should be near the screen hinge. It looks weird in the middle. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, if it was further back, the problem is it would, uh, that's where the exhaust is here. And you're either going to be kind of blocking the exhaust a little bit, uh, if you lay this flat or you're going to block the USB a ports over here on the right. So yeah, you're probably going to want to leave it kind of upward facing kind of like that most of the time. So that way airflow can get out right here. Also notice there is a, uh, a Velcro strap on the power cable. I like to see that. Um, nice functionality there. How much millimeter thickness is this? Uh, let me take a look. According to Oris, it is 1.02 inches thick. Um, and let me show you that in the side by side real quick. Um, that's how thick it is. I will say like the bottom of the laptop's fairly thin, but this 360 Hertz refresh rate display is thicker as far as like, like I would say this is thicker than average of a display thickness. The bottom of the laptop that was like your average laptop, like that's more of a portable thinner design. Um, it's really the display part that makes this laptop a little bit chunkier, which is, it's kind of interesting. Like very, this is probably one of the thickest display tops I've seen on a laptop this year. All right, I already put in the key this time today for, I can't, you know, I can't believe it. I, I did this ahead of time. More prepared than usual today. All right, and uh, we're gonna be at 100% brightness. We are at 100% brightness. Go ahead and do our screen test. It is flush. Uh, after the grass with another $2 super chat. Again, thanks so much for the super chat. I like when they put power cable ports in the back. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people like having a lot of ports in the back, especially like the power cable and like a USB-C or Thunderbolt because, you know, that would allow you to plug in your your power adapter and a USB-C in the back. And then, you know, maybe that's all you need to plug in in the laptop and you can have a very clean looking laptop on your desk. Um, but that is not this laptop, that's for sure. Okay, so we are going to go down to zero brightness. Man, this is one of the most minimal display bezels we have seen in any laptop for 2023. And it's on a 16 by nine aspect ratio laptop, which is very interesting because that's not usually the case. <laughs> All right, so I have no clue what nits brightness this display is supposed to be rated for. Um, I'm guessing around 300. It's supposed to be 100% sRGB though. That's the key thing I'm really looking for. And I would love to see it paired with at least 300 uh, nits brightness on the display. That would really be a nice bonus. If it was, if it was like 325 or 350, that'd be amazing. If it is like a little under 300, I'm like, okay. If it's like 250 or less, I'll be like really disappointed, but um, I don't think it'll be that dim. Like this display to my eyes, I'm guessing we're right around 300, if I were to, to guess. Pretty close to that at least. All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and take a look at our results. Okay, keep in mind that my Spider 5 Elite 
usually underestimates by about 7% compared to most other color checker tools out there for color gamut. Um, so that means that uh, if you were to measure this with like a X-Rite Pro or something like that, you'd probably get uh, over 100% sRGB, around 80 1% Adobe and around 82% of the P3 color gamut. That's overall pretty dang good for a gaming laptop. If you're looking for color experience during a gaming experience, um, being 100% sRGB to me is kind of like the baseline for a really good color experience. Uh, obviously going up to 100% Adobe or P3 color gamut really amplifies the color experience to another level, but usually costs a lot more at the same time. The brightness, 341 nits, let's go. All right, that's brighter than I thought it would be. The contrast ratio only being 920 to one is not quite as high as I would like. Um, usually, you know, the a little bit better quality displays are, you know, over a thousand to one on the contrast ratio. At least a lot of them this year have been over a thousand to one. But uh, for a 360 Hertz refresh rate display, these are great stats for doing, let's like I said, for doing esports gaming, 341 nits with over 100% sRGB and around a little over 80% of Adobe and P3 color gamut. So good. You get like a solid one and a half thumbs up, not like the perfect display, mainly because the color gamut could go up. Um, and also, the other thing is a lot of other laptops can have NITS brightness over 500 this year or close to 500. Um, but the thing is, when you compare this laptop from it, uh, like with the other laptops out there, this is going to be brighter than most uh, esports gaming laptops. And it's going to have, uh, at least at this price point for 1149, it's going to have a brighter display and a, a uh, probably about average on the sRGB. Like I think a lot of other laptops are gonna be close to 100% sRGB. But again, 360 Hertz refresh rate on this monitor. So if you're after eSports gaming performance, that's really the strength of this monitor, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, 4K sample footage real quick. Let me make sure this is turned up all the way. Okay. There we go. All right. So this is the uh, this is the Aura Seven's display quality with like a very colorful palette going on. Um, I mean. Visually speaking, to me, this is certainly like a very enjoyable amount of color from a gaming perspective. If you're a graphics designer, you could probably make this work as a bare minimum type of display, but usually I'd recommend higher color gamut displays for anyone that's doing video editing or Photoshop type of work. All right, so there's your display test. I guess we could do our backlight test as well. Backlight bleed, let's check it out. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and turn some lights off here. All right, let's take a look. What do we got going on here, all right? Not much. This laptop has almost no backlight bleed to my eyes. I see a little bit here. Um, I think that's it. I don't see it anywhere else on the display. Um, I do still have some RGB lit behind me on the desk, but uh, yeah, overall, very good backlight bleed. That will vary from laptop to laptop. So do not assume that you're going to get a unit with the same uh, minimal amount of backlight bleed. 
uh, you'll have to test your display panel to see if yours has more backlight bleed or not. But overall, that's very, very good, below average amount of backlight bleed for sure. Um, okay. There's your display test. Um, this is what we're going to be testing today. Let me go ahead and put some of this stuff away real quick. And uh, we're getting close. We're getting close to starting our benchmarking segment. We've got to do our speaker test. And then we'll start into our... Uh, we'll, We'll do our speaker test, and then we'll do our fan noise decibel testing to see how loud this thing gets. So let me go ahead and get my SSD plugged in. I've got a USB-C SSD that has all the games installed on it. All right, and uh, so next up, speaker test. Um, Realtek Audio Console. Looks like this is our audio control application. Speakers, let's go ahead and set them up to max volume. We'll turn them off mute. Um, if we go to the settings here, we have left, right audio balance. We also have equalizer effects that we can do. We can do powerful, we could do pop. Um, environment interesting you can make you can do some audio modifications here with uh, the environment and uh cool i don't know kind of interesting let's try peter spacey roar here we go oh wait we got to get our uh decibel meter set up and the camera positioned correctly scoot this back a little bit All right, lower the camera down a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and establish our baseline volume for the room. So right now we're at uh, around 41 and a half decibels. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do Peter Spacey Roar. Yeah, not amazing bass. When the bass was by itself, it wasn't bad. And then when the mids came in and the highs came in, it didn't seem that loud to me. Um, okay, so Faded Aeon Half-Life is next. Uh, also, I have, I have not repositioned the speaker, by the way. I should probably, I don't know, I should probably redo that with the speaker repositioned here. Okay, so Peter Spacey, roar one more time. Whoa, equalizer makes a huge difference.
Okay. Wow, it sounds so much better when I turned all of these custom, just did a custom EQ and just set everything to max. Everything's louder, it'll get more bass, got more mids, got more highs, got more everything. Um, so that's what I would recommend for the audio. Let's go ahead and try our next song. Have Faded Aeon Half-Life. Wow, these speakers sound so much better when the software is tuned better. Like it went from being like, I don't know, a six and a half ish range speaker system to being like, I don't know, eight and a half. I don't know, 8.4 or something. It's so much better now. Like there's more bass, there's more mids, there's more highs, there's more clarity. Everything, literally everything was better when I just turned everything to max on the EQ. Okay, Deuce Williams, La La Love You Like. Okay, so this these speakers, uh, they were hitting like 93 decibels in the Faded Aeon Half-Life, which is some of the highest uh, decibels that uh, we've measured. Overall, there's a, a good amount of volume. There's definitely some bass in there. Let me try Speeder Spacey Roar one more time. Yeah, I'd give these speakers like an eight point. I would give, so in terms of like bass, clarity, and highs, I'd probably give them like an 8.2, but they're so loud. I'm giving them like a little bit of bonus points because they're such loud speakers. So I'm gonna give them an 8.4 overall for the speaker quality on the Aorus. And this is an $1149 laptop. That's very high score for a cheaper laptop. Um, okay. Very nice. Let's move into our fan testing now. Um. There we go. Blake says, Does, do my eyes deceive me? Or are we testing this bad boy with Fortnite? Yes, that is the goal. We, I did install Fortnite yesterday. I was going to live stream this uh, laptop yesterday, but then I was like, you know what? This laptop deserves a few more games of eSports testing because I think that's the main pe person that's going to buy this laptop is the eSports player. So, so yeah, we've got... Um, we've added Valorant, CSGO, BattleBit Remastered, Dota 2, and Fortnite. So, like, four extra eSports games in our tests today. Um, hopefully, we can get to all of our games, but I'm going to do at least 10. So, yeah. Because, I, I mean, I think if someone's going to buy this laptop, they're mainly going to buy it uh, for the eSports capability. If I, if, at least that's the main reason I'm going to recommend this laptop, if it turns out to be pretty good. Blake Allen says, you're my hero. <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm glad to be someone's hero, at least. Uh, all I want is a laptop for Valorant and Fortnite that outperforms an Xbox Series S. Oh, well, this laptop's probably going to at least give you an overall better experience, certainly on the go, because obviously this is going to be better than a Xbox on the go. Um, but, but yeah. Okay, 
So we are going to run 3D Mark Time Spy in uh, in a loop here. I'll go ahead and switch, slide this over a little bit so we can get zoomed in on the screen. All right, so we're going to run graphics test two, windowed mode in a loop. Let's go ahead and start that and let's get Afterburner running if it's not already running. And uh, yeah. You can close that. All right, so we got to talk Gigabyte Control Center. So this is how you control your Aorus laptop. Um, there is the General tab. This allows you to enter creator mode, turbo mode, gaming mode, meeting mode, power saving, silence mode. All right, uh, there's also panel color calibration. You can set it to be different color palette profiles. So this is like your uh, white balance. Um, interesting. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Um, you can adjust your keyboard backlight in here to be brighter or dimmer. You also have your keyboard effect, which can be white, manual, or RGB, at least from this section. If you want to do your full keyboard control, it's under RGB Fusion. Um, you can enable disable Bluetooth, change your screen brightness, uh, change your charge mode. So under Customize, you can set how how much uh, battery you're going to charge the laptop up to. Um, let me see if I can get this to be a little darker so you can read this a little better. Uh, so under customize, like if you want the battery to only go to 60%, you can leave it right here. Or you can go up to like 80%, uh, which is right here. So that way uh, your, your lithium ion battery will last longer. I usually recommend 80% um, if you're going to use battery frequently. Um, unless you know you're going to run out of juice often. Okay, so you have your GPU, uh, GPU MUX switch right here. And I'm going to bring the laptop just a little bit closer so I can fill this screen a little bit more with this window so you can read stuff just a little bit better. Um, so we have the NVIDIA. I'm going to just do that so it's... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so NVIDIA graphics output mode or Intel graphics output mode. So Intel graphics output mode will let you switch between the integrated GPU and the dedicated GPU, but it's not going to give you maximum GPU performance in CPU bound games. Um, you're going to be a little bit more CPU limited. And given that this is an eSports laptop, I love that this has a MUX switch. That was one of the big problems with the Aorus 17 uh, H or Aorus 17 from a couple of years ago, it did not have a MUX switch. Aorus added a MUX switch this year. Definitely needed for this type of laptop. Um, we have a night light option, which should make you all, yeah, it makes everything yellow. Uh, NVIDIA control panel key switch here. You've got power mode, gigabyte high performance, gigabyte balanced and power saver. We're gonna do high performance, uh, I believe here. OSD switch on-screen display switch. I'm not sure what that is. Interesting. Um, turn wireless on and off and your volume control with a mute button. So that's everything there. You've got, uh, of course, the main the main thing here that you're gonna wanna definitely be playing with, make sure your MUX switch is set to NVIDIA graphics mode if you want maximum performance. And then you're probably gonna wanna go either into turbo mode or gaming mode. We'll have to see which one provides us the most performance. Uh, for now, we're going to start with turbo mode. Uh, I noticed that just there it said AI. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So it popped up in the bottom right corner. AI creator. You see that? When I switch the fan mode here. It, uh, let's go to turbo mode. AI turbo. Gaming, AI gaming. If I press FN plus this AI button, which is F12. Okay, so now I've turned AI off. There's no more AI going on here. Oh, oh, AI boost. Okay, so there's an AI boost button here on this tab. 
we can tap that up and I don't know, let's, I like the color more than 6,500. Uh, creator. Okay, so wait. Interesting. So if I do AI boost, that's just AI mode. There is no, there is no um, additional settings here. Like you're just letting AI handle it. But when you set turbo mode, that turns off the AI boost. And uh, now the fans, for example, are ramping up like crazy. Um, let me go ahead and raise the laptop up. All right, we have the laptop raised up now. Um, and let's also, I need to make this display a little bit bigger. Okay. So, I, I really think Gigabyte needs to work on uh, adjusting their software to make it a little more, e a little easier to understand what you're selecting here. So right now in turbo mode, we are getting 95 watts of power to the GPU. 18, 17 watts of power to the CPU, but 4.2 gigahertz on the, the CPU. So we're getting good performance from the CPU, even at the 18 watts. Um, our temps are very good here initially, but we'll have to see if they go up higher or not. Um, this is an RTX 4060, and we're just there, was pulling, we're doing over 100 watts of power right there which is good to see. Yeah, you know, I think we're gonna make this even a little bit bigger. Yeah, there we go, a little better. Okay, so 97 watts of power, 12 watts of power to the CPU. Wow, it's so minimal CPU. Excellent temps so far. If we go to creator mode, what happens? Creator mode, the fans, gone. Interesting. There's also this AI GPU boost. There's so many settings in this in this thing. AI GPU boost down here. If we go to NVIDIA Dynamic Boost, that gives us more GPU wattage. So very interesting. Let's try the AI mode. Okay, so this is AI mode enabled. AI mode, our temps are climbing up. There's no fan noise right now, by the way. It is, okay, now the fan noise is just coming back a little bit. Everybody grasp with the two dollars super chat, which laptop maker has the best software? From laptop perspective, Armory Crate from Asus is excellent. Lenovo usually has pretty good software with the Vantage software. Those are probably the top two. Right now, Razer software Synapse has come up a long way, but it's still out and running into some bugs with that one. Um, so the fans are ramping up now. The temps coming down. I saw 80, I think, on this GPU for a little bit. Um, let's try turning off AI boost and just going to gaming mode. This is so interesting. Like hearing the fans build up and then when I switch, I switch modes here, the fans like die. And then it's like the soft, like look at our temps. Our temps are climbing really fast because the fans are not running. And it's like they're, it's like the fans go down to zero and then it's like, oh yeah, this, the system is really hot right now. Let's ramp the fans up again. Um, so if you're switching between these, you're gonna have a moment of time where the fans are not really going which is right now why we're getting increased temps. 104 watts right now. Gaming mode giving us the most juice to the GPU looks like. So gaming mode giving us the highest GPU wattage. Our CPU wattage is very low at 12. Very low wattage. 102 watts to the GPU.
All right, let's try meeting mode. So if you're gonna play games when you're meet in a meeting. 80 watts, 15, super interesting. Um, let's go to power saving silence mode. Interesting. Power saving silent mode, knocking our GPU wattage down to 80. I'm, I am still hearing the fans a little bit. Which is interesting. Okay, so let's go to... Um, there's so many different modes in this. It's, I'm, I'm anticipating gaming mode is going to be our best performance. And then right here is our fan, our fan control. We have our fan control is separate. Uh, power mode. This is the po this is the fan curve for power mode. Eco mode. This is the fan curve. It's a little less aggressive. Normal, pretty similar. Power is a little bit more aggressive. Turbo. So turbo fan mode is max fans. That's what this means with the fan profile up. So we're gonna start with max fans for our noise testing. Now that we've basically tested all this and you can set your own custom fan profile too you can also do your own curve specifically whoa this is kind of funky fan curve <laughs> okay we're just gonna go turbo which are max fans all right um okay so notice our temps our temps got a bit spicy there when we were like switching between all the different modes so now that we're in turbo mode we're doing 105 watts to the GPU. Um, let's see uh, how much our temps come down now that we're in a sustained turbo fan profile. Let's scoot the laptop back a little bit and let's get our fan decibel meter going. All right. So keep in mind our our stock, uh, our stock or our ambient room noise base is uh, forty one and a half decibels today. Fifty six point four decibels for a max fan. That's not super loud for a max fan. We did an Acer Nitro 16 went to 64 decibels, 63 decibels. Uh, so this is quite a few decibels less than what some of the others are putting out. Um, LSP says, yikes, GPU is reading 85. Yeah, it was getting that hot because when we switched the fan profiles, the fans went down to zero. But the, the GPU is still going. It was still cranking. So uh, the temps spiked up quite a lot during that time. Uh, right now, the temps are coming down on the CPU and GPU. So 56 and a half decibels approximately. Let's go ahead and zoom in over here on uh, our temps. We've let the laptop run now for a couple, I don't know, a minute and a half. Oop, I bumped the camera. Uh, and our temps have come down a lot um, during that time. We are now down to 76 on the GPU, 66, 69, 70 on the CPU, uh, which is excellent. That's, that's in a good range, um, especially considering we were just much hotter because we were switching the fan profiles. Uh, and now that we're, now that the fans are being consistent, I think we're going to see even lower temps. I think these temps are still going down. Like I think, I think the temps realistically on this are going to continue going down for a little while. Uh, just a text guide says, uh, just arrived here. How big is the screen? This is a 17.3 inch display. So a large screen laptop, but it is a very minimal bezel. So it's, it's more portable than most 17 inch laptops. Ryan wants me to test Forza Horizon 5. Interesting. Um, I will consider it. 
I don't know if I will do it for sure. The main thing is I have a limited amount of time to test and uh, there are only so many um, only so many games I can do. Maybe maybe someday I can do a, um, a racing laptop, like a bunch of different racing games together uh, and look at the performance across several different games in racing games. So I, I think what we're seeing now is more the sustained temps. I guess it's down to 74, 75 degrees. I think this is an excellent all-around range right now. Um, and our temps, 60 to 75, between 65 to 75 on the GPU are excellent. That's, that's really, really good. Obviously, we are pretty loud on our fans right now, though, right? This is not a quiet gaming experience right now. But for a loud system, um, these are excellent temps with good performance. Okay, so next, we are going to change our fan profile over to normal okay so let me scoot this over here we're going to change our fans profile to normal okay so that resets everything notice the fan noise is completely quiet our temps are going to spike in the meantime and our fans are going to come up and hit a balancing threshold basically so right now they're kind of like hitting like right here and they're coming louder and they're getting louder we're ramping up. You can see that right now, uh, fan one says 63%, 69%. Temperatures are 79. So it's pumping it up to 69% right now. This is looking at the GPU temps right here, by the way. All right, so we're gonna let this normalize here. Uh, Arthur de Grasse with the five dollars super chat. Thanks so much. Why is there such a big FPS difference between a forty ninety and a forty eighty in Warzone using the same thirteen nine eighty HX CPU if Warzone is CPU intensive? So uh, in my experience, the forty eighty and forty ninety performed the same FPS, I believe, between the MSI GE seventy eight HX and the GT seventy seven. The GE78 had the same CPU, but a 4080 and the 4090 of the GT77, like it was the same FPS between those two. So um, if there is a performance difference that you're seeing between a 4080 and a 4090 with that i9-13980HX CPU, then you're probably looking at the game being tested at different times because Warzone 2 went through massive optimization patches right now. Um, that messed up with performance, messed performance up. Um, in addition, you might have different settings differences or resolution differences, or maybe different fan profile differences with different power limits being applied to that CPU in a different laptop or a different manufacturer, you know? Because um, it is CPU bound, if, if the CPU is being highly limited to only like 50 watts of power, it's gonna really hurt performance. So compared to, you know, if you have a, uh, if the CPU can just pull like 80 or 100 watts whenever it wants in Warzone 2, it's going to perform better, probably, on average. Okay, so we have given it like a minute now that I've answered that question. Uh, maybe two minutes here. Let's go ahead and see. Right now the fans are at 69%, so not max fans. I definitely hear the fans, but they're not super loud. We've got 77 degrees on the GPU, 74 on the CPU. So our temps are still uh, in a good range. We're not near thermal throttling by any means. Um, and we're still pulling high amounts of wattage through that GPU um, and reasonable amounts through the CPU. Let's go ahead and see what our fan noise is at. Fifty point six decibels, pulling ninety five watts and seventy seven degrees to that GPU. 
So uh, that's what normal fan mode sounds like. Let's try eco. And I don't know, let's try uh, power savings mode. All right, power savings mode and eco fans. Let's just gonna see how quiet um, we're going to see how quiet these fans can s stabilize to um, over a continuous GPU load. Of course, the fans went down to zero, and the fans are ramping up right now. Right now, they're at 39% utilized. And uh, our temps are a bit spicier than they were. Let's slide this down again. All right, so 80 watts of power going through that GPU. Our temps have come up a little bit, but that's partially because we did we did just switch the uh, the fan profiles. 39% still on the fans. They've not gone up past 39% yet in eco fan mode. Um, and keep in mind, we're in power savings, more silent mode. So this is like basically power reducing reducing our power, um, and also making the laptop much quieter. I can barely hear the fans right now at all. Um, so let's see what this gets for our uh, fan noise audio test. And then we'll, we'll come back to the temps here after it can equalize out a little bit. Um, Okay, keep in mind we're in 41.5 decibel room. Forty three point five decibels in this basically this is like silent gaming mode settings. That's basically why I would describe these fan profile settings as. That is a quiet gaming laptop. Um, and that right here, that right there is still good performance um, from the CPU and GPU perspective. I think this, I think in a CPU bound game where we're getting the CPU slammed, say in dead space, for example, it, things might get a little spicier, but you know, all of the CPU heat pipes are shared heat pipes. So even if the CPU does get warmer, um, and if we're CPU bound, then the GPU is not going to use as much heat. So the basically the heat being the additional heat being generated by the CPU should go out the GPU fan side if needed. Um, so overall, this is excellent performance. And if you were to undervolt and overclock this GPU, I think you could probably get near full levels of GPU performance out of this GPU, you know, pushing probably close to the 20, uh, 2450 to 2500 clock speed at 80 watts of power. Um, and of course, if you do that with max fans, you're gonna get really cool temps. Uh, well, at the same time, you know, getting basically full performance from the 4060. So uh, obviously this, this laptop allows so much customization, almost, almost too much customization that makes it just a little bit hard for a user to understand how to set this up. But in general, I would say if you want a quieter fan profile, probably just use this eco fan and under the general settings here, use power saver silent mode. Um, and if you want max performance, probably just do gaming mode and under max fans, it automatically switched it to power. Uh, but if you want to have max fans, you switch the fans to turbo, which should basically instantly ramp up our fans to maximum speed. Um, notice that doing this switcheroo here, we get very spicy temps temporarily, uh, and these temps are gonna come down as the max fans engage. Okay, so there is all the settings for the Gigabyte Control Center that you need to know about for controlling this laptop's power and how loud the laptop is. 43 and a half decibels in silent gaming mode, 56 decibels, 56 and a half decibels in max fan mode. Overall, not bad at all. Uh, and temperatures, 
are very good, except when switching between fan profiles. You have a bit of a lull in the fan noise. Uh, the fans go down for like 5, 10 seconds and then pick back up again. Okay, so we are ready to just go ahead and run Time Spy and see what we get. Uh, keep in mind, we have no overclock applied. Almost all of the other manufacturers are applying an overclock. Let me just reopen Afterburner and verify that. Yeah, no overclock being applied here in Afterburner. Um, if I were to go to turbo mode and reopen Afterburner, do we get an overclock then? No, turbo mode still does not have an overclock. We're going to do gaming mode and we're going to do turbo. Now, when you're, when you're doing the switch here on the fan profile, it automatically changes the fan control as well. So pretty interesting. I guess, I'm guessing turbo mode here. Yeah, turbo mode sets it to turbo fans. Gaming mode seemed to set the highest GPU boost though. And then we want turbo fans with gaming mode. I think that's the maximum performance mode for this laptop. Should give us the best performance overall. So let's go ahead and run. Times by. Big Fork Boy says, would you consider Acer Helio 16 mini LED to 50 hertz, 4080, 13900HX, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabyte SSD for 2600? A good deal. Yeah, decent. I don't think it's a mind-blowing deal, but it's one of the best displays that you can buy with one of the best CPUs you can buy with a good amount of RAM and SSD space with a 4080. So the main, the main one that's competitive probably with that would just be like trying to go for a 4090 at that same price. But uh, like I'd say in the Legion 7 or Omen 17, uh, that would just be prioritizing GPU performance though over display quality. And if you go with that Helio 16, you're basically prioritizing display quality over, uh, over uh, GPU performance. But you're still gonna have good GPU performance with that Helio setup. Okay, so taking a look, we got 63 degrees on the GPU, 51, 50 on that CPU. Starting in max fans um, obviously gives us a thermal advantage compared to doing thermal load testing on a continuous basis when we're switching between the different fan profiles in particular. A nice GPU boost clock of 2490 gets us close to peak GPU boost clocking. Now, with an overclock, we might be able to push that as high as maybe 2700 or 2650 um, using MSI Afterburner, uh, which would net, net us quite a bit higher performance as well. So just know that this lap, this test is not necessarily the, the most FPS that you could possibly get with this laptop. Um, like I think with an overclock, you could probably push this laptop a little bit further, um, you know, another five, five to 7% higher, most likely. You would have bought the Omen 17, but you need a number pad. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I think you probably won't be disappointed with that Helios, most likely. I think you'll probably like it. It'll hit, uh, it'll be a great display quality with um, good enough GPU and CPU performance that you'll be happy for a long time. Okay, GPU, 69 degrees. CPU, 60 degrees. 95 watts right now to the GPU. Um, this is basically near peak potential performance for an RTX 4060. The main thing here is there's no out of the box overclock and there's no user overclock after the fact either. Um, and our temps are obviously excellent here. 68 degrees, 70 degrees on the GPU, 63, 72 on the CPU. So all around what we're seeing here is excellent, uh, excellent performance overall. So that's good. I think, I think the, uh, you know, 
Oris selecting the i5 12500H CPU is going to be an interesting choice. We'll have to see how much it gets in Cinebench R23 as well as the CPU bound games today. Because I think the i5 CPU is probably going to be one of the main weak points of this system's performance. So, and here's the CPU test right now in Time Spy. So let's see what we get here. It's doing 70 FPS, 50 FPS, 45. That's the thing. The i5 CPUs are capable of excellent single-threaded CPU performance, but not not as many big P cores, basically, which could impact multi-core threaded performance in games that can take advantage of, like, say, eight cores, like Battlefield or um, Warzone 2. Okay, 10,501, which is an excellent score for an RTX 4060 um, without any overclocking. So that's the no overclock score, 10,300 for the CPU, that's excellent for an i5 CPU. So that's really, really good. Um, keep in mind, again, we could push this performance a bit more with some overclocking if we wanted to. Um, all right. So it's time to run Cinebench R23. We're going to install Process Lasso. We'll exit a couple of the extra applications here in the background. All right. <laughs> Everybody grasp with another $5 super chat. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, why does the CPU clock increase to max speed 5.5 gigahertz when I frame limit to 30 FPS versus 240? FPS only runs at 4.3 gigahertz. Um, it's probably because the CPU is not actually being uh, under full load. When it's, when it's not under full load, it, it, the clock speed can rise up uh, and hit higher theoretical clocks, but it's not actually processing anything at that clock speed. So it, it kind of looks like it's going faster, but it's, I mean, it's not really going faster. All right. Let's go ahead and get HW info open. Bingo. All right. And we can pull this laptop a lot closer now that we've done our thermal testing. Um, and I can set this actually right here. Yeah, there we go. All right. So let's check out our cores here. We have only four P cores. All right. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about uh, reduced performance in multi-core workloads. Uh, where you really want six or eight P cores. So, you know, the, the new i7HX CPUs have like eight P cores, I believe. The i9 have eight P cores. The i7s, I think, have six P cores. Uh, and the i5 here, only four P cores. P cores standing for performance cores. We have eight E cores. That's a lot of E cores uh, for an i5. So that's nice. This is going to make this is going to mean that this CPU is going to excel in multi-core workloads for video editing and other things like that because of all these extra E cores. But um, for example, some of the i7 uh, the i7 CPUs will have six P cores and only four E cores, which is going to be better for gaming performance. Um, at least if you want multiple P cores. Now. If you're after just single threaded P core performance, this CPU should be just as good or very close as a lot of the top CPUs out there. So um, 
for games like Apex Legends or, you know, uh, I believe CSGO is still single threaded. So like certain games like that, it does not really matter. This is CPU is going to be excellent for a lot of these esports games. Um, whereas some of the newer esports games that are designed for multi-core workloads like Battlefield and Warzone 2, those ones are probably not going to have as good a performance on this CPU for that reason. So it depends on which esports game you're going to play with this laptop. Um, but yeah, that's the design. So let's go ahead and see what kind of performance we get in Cinebench R23. We're going to do uh, only one-off testing here initially. Okay, so our P cores are doing 4.2 gigahertz, our E cores 3.1 gigahertz. Our temps are excellent so far during this initial workload boost, 76 degrees on the CPU package, 64 on the, on the cores, um, and package power peaking at 87 watts of power, 82 watts, uh, sorry, 55 watts now so we've so the initial burst appears to be around an 85 watt power limit our long power limit is going to be 55 watts on this cpu and wow our temps are phenomenal um 64 degrees 57 degrees the main issue here 55 watts for sustained workloads is not going to give us maximum performance on this cpu so we ended up getting 12,674, which is not as high as what we have seen on some of the other laptops, but we've also seen a lot higher temps on some of the other laptops too. So, uh, so it's kind of like a catch 22. Do you want higher temps or do you want higher wattage levels? Um, and that's where it's going to depend. Uh, Everton grass with uh, another $5 super chat. Why? Oh, that's the same one. Sorry I asked too many questions. No, you don't ask too many questions. I appreciate all of this. Uh, I appreciate people asking questions because it's helpful for other people to learn too. If your CPU is close to throttling at 240 FPS, it will slightly downclock to a more stable clock speed. Same behavior happens in benchmarks. We'll see CPU clock boost high at first, then it settles down. That's true too. You might have like your long power limit and then you... You, you have your short power limit and then it runs into the long power limit and it goes down in wattage and performance. So that's another reason why you might be having a 5.5 gigahertz boost temporarily and then going down to 4.3 when the long power limit sets in. So it really depends. So right now our P cores are doing 3.3 gigahertz, 1200 for our multi-core workload there, not super high end cpu performance you know um it's i mean it's obviously it's enough to get your work done like it's it's gonna it's gonna do basic video editing and photoshopping and all of that no problem um but i'm curious if we were to go to general and do creator mode creator mode might actually give us the most cpu performance with this laptop let's try it so creator mode here now, and let's go to fan profile turbo. All right, let's see what this gets us. So 4.2 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.1 gigahertz on the E cores, and we are doing 80 watts again for our CPU, but let's see what's sustained over the long haul I wonder if it's going to be able to stay at that wattage level. No, it is still dropping down 52.4 watts. And this is lower than it has to. Like, like this CPU could definitely be running um, a bit spicier than this and still have excellent temps. Look at that, 57 degrees and 63 degrees. 57 on the core. 63 on the package. So excellent overall temps for this system. Has the Lenovo lock arrived in your hands yet? No, it should be coming tomorrow. Should arrive tomorrow. And then I'll, um, I think I'm gonna be taking a, 
a little trip for a day or two, and then we should have the lock live stream probably early next week. Eleven thousand eight ninety nine. Eighty two watts of power again. Now it's dropping again very quickly. So, I mean, this is basically the level of performance you're going to see in a sustained loop. Uh, so honestly, I'm not even going to worry about doing a 10 minute test this time. Um, we're going to just 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 because uh, I want to be able to keep moving through. And we've got a bunch of extra games to test today. So we're going to just do one more Cinemage R23 test after this one's done. And I think that'll be, a like, it would be very similar to a full 10-minute test on this laptop based on what I'm seeing. Graph says, can you do one live where you test all the games that your channel members request as long as you have the game purchased already? Well, the game also needs to be installed, too. Um, but uh, that could be an interesting idea. So 11,941. Okay, so this will be our, like, I'm pretty sure basically it's going to be right around 12,000 is what our number is going to be. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like... Everything crass. That would be interesting to try every game that people request. The problem, the main problem, of course, is I need the game installed ahead of time because I don't want to sit there for a half hour every time someone requests a game that I don't have. Um, you know, maybe I should get like an eight terabyte SSD and install all the games. I have like 50 games on there. Um, I don't have Battlefield 2042, but I, if you're a Battlefield player, I probably would not recommend this laptop, probably. Uh, mainly because Battlefield likes lots of threads, lots of uh, high performance core threads. That said, I mean, I, I imagine you'll still get good performance in Battlefield with this laptop. It's just uh, not gonna be necessarily the peak. Okay, so 12,197. This is gonna be very similar to what we get in a 10 minute test. A little bit over 12,000. This is about what I was expecting. So, so that's that's your CPU performance. It's it's good, but it's below average. I guess I guess I don't know. Like I guess would you call that good? I would I would say that that is okay, but not great. Poor, not mediocre. Obviously, it's enough to to. That's the thing. Like it's enough to do anything you want, and you this thing is going to perform multi. Like you open a bunch of, you open you open a bunch of browsers and windows and like photoshop and a video edit it's all going to run fine until you run out of system ram or something you know um it's really just the multi-core workloads or the games and applications that want eight high performance cores that's the really the main issue so overall the this thing is just going to be slower in rendering performance compared to some of the other laptops that have like eight cores, 16 threads of high performance, like the Ryzen chips or the i7 that, or i9 chips that have six or eight performance cores. Okay, so beautiful. Um, we have done all of these tests. It's time to move to Apex Legends time. It's time to bust out the games. Battlefield 2042 had poor reviews and players would rather play BattleBit instead. Yeah, I think that is actually true. Wow. Speakers are quite loud. Um, we again, you know, we've got our speakers set to like super high volume levels with the EQ. 
Okay, so now we're gonna need to make our window smaller for or our text smaller. For this, okay. I think I'll need to go even one size smaller because that's a little, little bit too big still. Okay, there we go. Okay, so into the firing range we go. I'm not sure what Remnant 2 is, so. Okay, so you can see we're at 1920 by 1080. VSync is disabled. We have everything else on high settings. We need to go through and change some of these key binds. Okay. Okay, so in high settings, we are getting a hundred and like 50 to 160 right now. Okay, so I've just refreshed it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our um, all around performance here. Uh, we are basically being GPU bound, 95 GPU percent utilization, very high GPU utilization, 80 watts of power, 50 watts going to that CPU. So the CPU is really tanking a lot of juice right now. Very smooth gameplay. Very fluid display right now, like extremely fluid display. Uh, it feels very responsive considering that it's a, a whole, I'm only getting 160 FPS, but the screen smoothness seems smoother than that, honestly. Like I'm not, I'm actually not kidding. It feels smoother than the 160. I don't I think it's that's because of the high refresh rate, 360 Hertz display. I don't know. Very interesting. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and set um, everything to low now and see if we can hit our 300 FPS cap for the game. So this game maxes out at 300, uh, 300 FPS at the most. So if we look straight down, we're getting 300 FPS. So you won't go higher than that, even if you have a 360 Hertz refresh rate display. Um, but it looks like we're actually going to be getting about 240 FPS in this title. Two hundred and seventy on aiming. At least in the firing range. We'll have to see what, what kind of FPS we get in an actual match here. Two hundred and seventy-two. Very good performance. Which again, like to me, that's like why I'm like this laptop would be perfect for an Apex competitive person that's on a budget. You want something that's gonna be extremely fluid and smooth. We just had a little blip there on the frame time graph. You can see it, but you can see it's, it's like it's extremely fluid. Definitely more fluid than your average gaming laptop, uh, especially at the eleven hundred dollar, twelve hundred dollar price range that we're talking about right now. Okay, so we averaged two hundred and sixty-eight. Our one percent low. We've been having these little extra blips here and there, uh, reducing our one percent low. I feel like our 1% low most of the time is higher than 95, but we've had keep having these little blips. I wonder if that's because of the i7, uh, the i5 processor, or what. I don't know. Um, also, I wanted to go in here and I wanted to try coming off creator mode. Let's go to let's go to gaming mode again, and we'll go back to turbo fan mode. So gaming mode, turbo fan mode. I want to see what that does to our GPU, CPU wattage here. Interesting. Our, our GPU wattage went down. We were doing 80 watts before. Right? But our CPU now is pulling higher. Okay, I just refreshed it.
Interesting. Very interesting. 55 watts to that CPU, 82 degrees, 72 watts to the GPU, 72 degrees. Overall, maintaining great temps. Uh, well, oh, maintaining good temps. I would say the CPU could be a little lower, but overall, very good. Uh, considering the amount of juice going through that CPU is much higher than it was earlier. I was a little afraid the CPU is going to get real spicy. Uh, but it hasn't really gotten that spicy, actually. And this has been a sustained workload. So one, 265 on the FPS, 131 for a 1% lows now in this mode. So that's very good. Effort to grass with a $2 super chat. Would you prefer Blade 18 or Scar 1816? Well, I bought the Blade 18 after using the Scar 16 and 18. So uh, I definitely preferred the Blade 18 overall for the premium features it had. But not everyone should necessarily get that, so. Would you rather pick the Flow X16 3070 Ti Mini LED or the G14 4060 Mini LED? Um, well, if you ever plan on, if you ever plan on using an external GPU, the XG Mobile, the Flow X16 has more features in that sense. And definitely a better display with the Flow X16 in my opinion. So yeah, I'd probably pick the Flow X16 3070. It's gonna be about the, it's gonna be a little bit heavier, but you get a bigger screen. But usually the Flow X16 is gonna cost more money too. So, and then if you want a 4000 series GPU support, you can always, uh, you could always uh, get a like RTX 4090 XG Mobile later on down the line. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reset our FPS counter. So we're doing 270 FPS right now. Well, we just killed that guy. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna turn the sound up to max so we can hear what the sound sounds like. This is excellent performance right now. Like, I feel like I can aim really, really well. You know, it's interesting that we're only getting 56 for our 1% low. It does not feel that way to me at all right now. I'm not really noticing any frame time glitches. Like, look at our frame time graph. It's so smooth. Oh, we got occasional hitch here and there. Like, it seems so so much easier. Well, not so much easier, but it seems very easy to follow the targets with this high refresh rate display. Let's go say hello to that Octane, yeah? We are murdering this team. <laughs> oh crap. Ooh, we got a shot from behind. Uh, Tono, I'm not sure how to say your whole name, uh, says 105 watt GPU is really 75 watt. Well, you got to keep in mind that real world usage is uh, going to be dramatically different. And this is, we're being, we're definitely being CPU bound a little bit, at least right now. 
How do I toggle zoom? I can't. Um, yeah, so like right now we're only hitting 32% uh, GPU utilization. You'll see higher GPU utilization in some of the other games. Because um, in, in TimeSpy, we did see up to 105 watts of GPU utilization. So realistically, I think we'll see that again at some point. Okay. I hate, the, I hate this gun. <laughs> I can never hit anything with this gun. Um, I have no clue why, it's just I'm always messing the shots. He died before he landed. <laughs> oh my goodness, we've got so many kills this game, we got six kills already. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got an enemy down here. <laughs> it's just a massacre. Okay, so uh, we are getting 225 FPS right now. And things are feeling very good all around. Our 1% lows really are not as high as I would like to see, though. At 53, like you got a little st frame time stutter right there. I was standing still and they still didn't kill me. I feel bad. Okay, they killed me that time. Uh, you play this game very well, thank you. Someone report to his boss for slacking on the job playing games. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, well, we're only nine kills away, so I'll go ahead and finish out this match. <laughs> we caught that guy flying through the air. Someone was shooting us from behind. I don't know where... Go and heal up here. Oh, that guy's got a Kraber. I'm low on health. Oh my gosh, I'm on the side too. Okay, averaging 224 FPS so far. Second highest kills on the team. But visually speaking, the screen just feels so, so dang responsive. When I'm turning and aiming, there's just, there's no ghosting to this display. Um, it's an excellent gaming experience. Um, and I would say, if you're a hardcore esports gamer, I think you would notice the difference. Um, okay, so next up is Valorant, actually. Been a while since I tested Valorant. I tested it in a couple different uh, tested it a couple different times. Already in 2023, but not with a budget laptop. So I don't know what a 4060 is going to uh, be able to get. I'm hoping our FPS is going to be good. Mm. 
Wow, 98 people on the live stream today. Thank you guys so much for uh, stopping by. Um, I'd invite all of you to uh, like the live stream, consider subscribing if you like gaming laptop reviews and you want to see more of them. Yeah, or gaming tech in general. I'll probably do more gaming tech in general as well. Put a like, guys. Yes. We got that W in the last game. That's worth liking the live stream for, right? 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 Um, now we got to try Valorant and get my booty kicked here. Okay, so. All right, let's go to our settings. Um, so. 1080p. Uh, limit FPS in menus. That's fine. Limit FPS, max FPS always set to 60, but that's turned off, I believe, so it should be fine. Graphics quality currently is set to high, no V-Sync, with 4X anti-aliasing, 8X anastrophic filtering, improved clarity is off, beta experimental sharpening, bloom, so everything is set to on. It's like high settings, basically, right now. We're gonna go into a deathmatch mode and see what FPS we get on high settings. And then we're going to try turning settings down to low. Well, unless high settings gets us to 360. I don't think I don't think high settings will get us to 360 FPS though. I think we're going to have to turn the settings down a little bit. I think high settings will get us in the 150 to 200 something range. 150 to 225. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe a little more. Death match. Warm up. Whoa. High settings. We're doing 300 FPS right now. Uh, can I get a better gun, please? Hello. Oh, and we're dead. Okay, so high settings, 250 FPS. My power does not end. Ask for aid and you 360 fight. FPS right now. Okay, that did not help me win though. Um, wow, the CPU and GPU, it's amazing how little wattage it's pulling to be able to push this high of frame rate right now. Okay, I started a new uh, frame rate counter for uh, since the match started here. Ah, I can't land the headshot. Trying to, I'm doing a headshot weapon where you have to basically land the headshot with. The First or second shot, or you're dead. So, 294 FPS on high settings. Let's go ahead and try the low settings and see if we get any improved quality. So we'll go uh, low. Low settings now, let's see what we averaged. 400 FPS, 380. So we're hitting 360 FPS right now in Valorant. On average. We got someone to our left and to our right. Woo! Woo! Just deleted that guy. Oh, and we got deleted. <laughs>
Okay, last life. Okay, 327 FPS on average, almost 360. That is just so good. I want to keep playing. I just want to keep shooting. Uh, that is so good. So high settings, we were in the uh, mid-high 200s. Low settings, we were doing over 300 on average. Really taking advantage of that 360 hertz display. All right. So next up, we have CS Go. The GPU wattage. Yeah, the GPU CPU wattage it is. We are barely. We were barely utilizing the GPU and CPU in that whole thing. Like it's, the game is so optimized to push high FPS. Like. It's incredible, actually. Honestly, it's amazing that an i5 CPU and like the set, only the second best GPU can push such insanely high FPS in such a popular esports game. It's crazy. Um, and it was doing that at like, let's see, what, what's the uh, what's the wattage we were pulling there? Only 40, 40, 40 watts on low settings. We were doing 20 watts of GPU. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Okay, so yeah. That is that goes to show you that goes to show you that it is really not about uh, it like some of these games, right? Some of these games are doing like 70 FPS or something with like max wattage and GPU utilization. Like esports games can be so freaking optimized that you can get insanely high FPS at low GPU and CPU utilization. Um, it's just mind blowing to me that we are getting such high FPS on such low wattage. Okay, so here we are. CSGO currently doing 700 FPS. This is just the stock high settings. So uh, obviously if you were to do this with um, low settings, you could get even higher FPS if you wanted. Currently 400 to 500 FPS range. Man, I remember playing this game, um, well, Counter-Strike 1.6 on a CRT monitor and a desktop that didn't even have a GPU on it. It was just using the integrated GPU. That thing barely got like 25 to 30 FPS. I was like in junior high and it was my game, all right? I had to play <laughs> and I had to play with what I had. Um, and then I had eventually built my own gaming desktop with my dad. And then I had that extra desktop for my friends. And I, my gaming desktop could do like, you know, like high FPS, like six, like I think it was like over 100 or something like that. And Counter-Strike 1.6. And uh, I played Counter-Strike like eight hours a day when I was in junior high in the summers. I had like a clan. I like ran a clan with like 50 members eventually when i was in like eighth grade and then in high school i played counter-strike as my main game for a couple of years in high school too it's so like three or four years in a row i just played counter-strike 1.6 and then csgo came out i don't know when sometime when i was in high school and uh i don't know i didn't like csgo as much i guess averaging 382 fps here in CS go. So obviously, uh, the, I didn't check the FPS during smoke. I'm sure it's much lower than 382 in, when you're inside of smoke, but, uh, often, oftentimes in this game, you're going to be able to take advantage of this 360 Hertz refresh rate display. Let's pop into a dust two match real quick and try to shoot a couple people.
Clark says, impressive FPS for Valorant. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was. Like, I remember, I remember doing Valorant testing a couple of years ago, and many of the laptops struggled to hit more than 200, and 200 or so FPS. Like, 250 was, like, around near the peak of what we were seeing. So, right now in CSGO, 260 FPS... Keep in mind, we are on high settings. Wow, this guy's good. Using that USP to get a double kill. But this guy has a good kill death ratio. Yeah, he has 10 kills to seven deaths. This guy has got a terrorist camping him. Ooh, he's low on health. He did. Okay, so we're getting in the 250 to 300 FPS range here in CSGO uh, on high settings. Let's... Let's... Uh, I picked up the bomb. Why'd you give me the bomb? Let's give him the bomb. Okay, so over 200 FPS. Wow, it's so fluid, su super responsive. Um, that said, let's try. Let's go to our video settings. Let's do very low. 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 None. Disable. All right, we're applying these settings. Oh no, CSGO reset us. So we gotta relaunch the game. Hopefully the low settings took for CSGO, but I'm thinking our FPS is gonna be like way higher, hopefully. Maybe it won't be, maybe we're just CPU bound and it's gonna be the same FPS, but. it You know, it, CSGO, it did have a setting in there that was uh, multi-core rendering. So they must be able to use more than one core. I don't know how many cores CSGO can actually utilize, though. Pretty sure someone had just given us the bomb, too. And then we're just going to sit there AFK until we die. Okay, hold on. Cancel search. We need low settings. Okay, let's see what we get with low settings. Your match is ready. Okay, so low settings. Okay, so now we're doing 380, 360, 300. We're hitting, we're hitting our screen refresh rate right now, um, 400. Is our max FPS set to 400? Looks like we're not going above 400. We raised it. Okay, so now we're getting 600. 400 FPS down here. Dang, okay. Well, oh, well, that's bad timing. That guy got an ace. What's my favorite game um, of all time? Or my favorite esports game? 
I'm a big Apex Legends fan and player. I've got a lot of time in Apex Legends. Uh, but honestly, I've played a lot of almost all of the different games, so... We're doing almost 400 FPS right now. Ooh, got another kill. Okay, we finally died. Um, so 700 FPS, 300. So yeah, CSGO, you definitely be able to take advantage of the 360 hertz display resolution or display refresh rate. And it is super, super responsive using this, this game. Like the camera cannot demonstrate to you how clear this looks to my eyes. It looks very clear. All right, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and move on to our next game. So next game is going to be Battle Bit Remastered. Now Battle Bit Remastered, I ran into some weird optimization issues. We'll give it a shot because I downloaded it, installed it, and tried to tune it. But um, Battle Bit Remastered uh, got it's so Battle Bit Remastered. If you don't know, it's like the super optimized game that is almost like Minecraft level graphics or like Roblox level graphics. And it is just like a really optimized, efficient shooter. And the thing is, um, I, in my testing, my initial quick testing I, I did on this, I saw really good performance, but it wasn't like it was like it was almost like it was frame capped to only like 150 FPS. Like I couldn't get more than 150, even though I was only using like less than 50 watts on the CPU and GPU. So I don't. It's super weird, but we'll we'll see what we get now. Like see right there, 150 FPS right now. We have been defeated. Can you tell the difference between 240 and 360? Um, yeah, I think, well, I think, so, first of all, to be able to really tell the difference, the biggest thing is if, if both the 240 hertz display and the 360 hertz display are super fast response rate displays, it becomes harder to tell a difference. But number two, you actually have to be getting that much FPS in whatever game you're playing. Because if you don't actually get that much FPS in the game you play, then you're not really going to see the, the benefits, right? Okay, whoa, now we're getting 400, 500 FPS. Okay, nice. Okay, so going into our video settings, I have max FPS set to 1,000. That, that setting must not have taken into effect until I restarted the game. So right now we're at 1080p. Uh, so we have anti-aliasing on high with shadows enabled, shadow resolution, ultra. So this is, what, this is like ultra settings, I think. So we're at ultra settings in Battlebit Remastered, and we're getting 450 FPS. Let's see what we get as we go get more players on here. So this is a 256 FPS um, like 200, 256 player match. And you can see like all the little dots indicating people. But yeah, it's super basic graphics. You can see how basic the graphics are. And right now we're on ultra settings too. So if we turn the settings down, we'll probably get consistently more FPS than uh, 360, I bet. Look at all these players. There's so many players in this game. It is crazy. 
So smoke's going out, and we're still getting 250 FPS with smokes on the screen. You can even parkour in this game. Oh, and we got killed. When you get shot, the nearest medic can kill you. Oh, sorry, the nearest medic can revive you. Did someone try to revive me? Okay, someone's reviving me. So I'll wait for this guy to revive me instead of... I was going to bleed out, but... Oh. I hit the rock in front of me. Oy, oy, oy. Don't revive me. They're just gonna kill me again from the same spot. This kind of. Oh, it's an enemy right there. Oh, snap. They're invading. I've only played this game a little bit, so. <laughs> um, does Alienware have. Alienware has a 480 hertz refresh rate laptop. That's correct, but it's going to cost a lot of money if you want a 480 hertz refresh rate. Compared to this one, you're getting 360 hertz refresh rate and, you know, pretty decent uh, all around. I think pretty decent all around specs and everything for your money and everything, you know. Uh, at least in esports games, like, we are killing it right now 273 fps on ultra settings um let's go ahead and switch some settings around and see what we get on low settings so i'm gonna set low fps low settings I'll apply i don't know if that's actually going to improve everything or not right away i don't know if you have to restart the game to get these setting advantages i'm seeing differences in shadows things look a little more simple now Resetting our average. Our average doesn't seem to be going up very much. I'm guessing it's because we're CPU bound. And uh, so therefore lowering the settings is not really giving us a performance boost. I'm guessing the RTX 4060 is like overkill for this game. Big time, I saw an enemy right as I died. I was like, oh, there's an enemy. And I went to, and I'm dead. <laughs> What's up, Lance? Oh, I just, I, I'm being bandaged. Let's go. And I'm dead <laughs> Okay, so I'm not sure how much additional performance you'd be able to get in Battle Bit Remastered, but we're clearly getting such an incredibly good frame time, just so, so low of uh, FPS for our 1% lows, or, you know, our 1% lows are still high, 160, 262, and so we're getting more than 240 FPS. For sure. And this is the most amount of players, you know. But yeah, yeah, I would just keep this thing on ultra settings. Enemies are right there. Oh my god, dude. I'm bandaging myself. Okay, I bandaged myself. Wow, these guys are so good. Okay, all right, so there's battle bit. I'm fine, I'm fine with that test. You know, obviously, depending on what map you play, you're gonna get way more or less FPS in battle bit remastered. So let's go on to Dota 2. Dota 2 being one of the most popular um, esports games that's like a strategy MOBA, and this is a... Um, and if you're wondering, right, this is Dota 2, but if you're wondering about League of Legends performance, I guarantee you you're going to get 360 FPS in League of Legends. Like, you're going to get probably in the 500, 600 range. I don't know. I don't, not, I don't know. All the time. Probably when things get crazier in League of Legends, it might go down a little bit. But League of Legends is very easy to run game. Um, so you're going to get the full 360 FPS, I think, in League of Legends. I'm not sure about Dota 2. Dota 2 being, you know, a Valve game that uses a completely different engine. 
Oh, you must be new. Let's get started. Okay. Uh, I've played Dota 2. Okay, so uh, we're going to want to do play Dota. We'll do play versus bots, solo, medium. Let me check where are the settings. Uh, so for video, let's go ahead and see what... We're using best looking settings right now. So max settings. DX11 with re NVIDIA Reflex enabled. So we're basically doing max maximum possible settings for this game right now. We'll go ahead and I'll go as Invoker. Invoker was my jam when I played um, when I played Dota 2. Well, let's go ahead and get some Tango and a Null Talisman to start with. Now I have I have so many skins for uh, Dota 2. Back when I played it, I had skins. Like Dota 2 was my game for about three years. I played Dota 2. I played ranked Dota 2, and I was in like the top one percent of players back when I played it extensively. I have not played this though in like five six years probably. This is cool. Got an intro animation. Looks like we're getting a max FPS cap of 120. Oh no, we're not. We're not. We're not maxing FPS right now, but we're barely utilizing. Yeah, 120 is. We're getting kind of max FPS cap. So can I? Can I pause the game? Let's see. I don't think we'll be able to pause it. Okay. Uh, let's go. Is there a way to boost? Remove FPS cap. Use advance. Max frames allowed. We can set it to 240. Is the highest we can set it to be. So right now We are uh, currently doing 210. Keeping in mind. The battle begins. Oh, someone died already. What? So this is what mid laners do. Some laners do this. Uh, to kind of get their lane to be in a little bit better position so they can have the high ground when fighting. You just don't want them to get all the way to the tower. Oops, I did the wrong one. Well away. Stands ready. So your goal is to last hit as many of these as possible to get money so you can get upgrades. It's really hard to do. It's a really fun mini game to try to get as many last hits as possible and try to deny the last hits to your opponent as well. So right now 187 FPS on ultra settings. Our temps are also pretty good. Let's go ahead and try low settings for our video settings now. Um, effects and shadows are probably the two biggest things. But we'll turn off everything. As needs be. Wow. So FPS didn't really change much. Fight me. 
but 180 is still quite good. You know, I think we're basically being CPU bound, so I don't think you're going to see much gains by going with a uh, lower settings. Really, if you want to get more more performance in Dota 2, what you're going to have to do is get a better CPU, um, basically. So, oops. All right, so we're going to try to see if we can kill this kill this shadow fiend. I don't think we can. Oh, there's a rune over here too. We got a little battle here. Yeah, we killed Windrunner. Let's go. So every time you get a kill in this game, it's huge. Because uh, basically, uh, it's a big swing of momentum for XP and gold. And XP and gold is what how you build momentum, and eventually you can just out level anyone that you're fighting and kill them. So the Shadow Fiend is like, run away! I don't like you. All right, so that's Dota 2, basically 180 FPS. If you're a Dota 2 player, getting a 360 hertz display is not going to really benefit you much, I don't think. So. So yeah, I think I think uh, the best way, the best way to improve your FPS in Dota 2 is to get a higher end CPU. The i5 CPU in this, um, only able to put out 180 FPS. Obviously, in very good gaming experience, no complaints um, at all. There's like you know, but if you're like, I gotta have like 200, 300 FPS in Dota 2, this is probably not the laptop for you. That's just the way it is, you know. If you're, uh, but if you're okay with 180, this is gonna this is gonna be great. So, um, depends on how serious you are. Uh, Tech is fun. Says I recently got a Strix G16 with a 4070, and sometimes the M macro keys at the top for volume profiles, etc., stop working completely until I do a shutdown. Did you experience this as well in your own unit? Um, so we're hopping into Fortnite next. Uh, tech is fun. I'm trying to understand what your question is. Sometimes the M macro keys at the top for volume profiles, etc., stop working completely until I do a shutdown. I have not experienced that, but most likely I would recommend upgrading Armory Crate and making sure all your BIOS uh, drivers were up to date. We had I had uh, the brightness keys not working. You know, it basically got to the point where I was unable to adjust the volume or the brightness display of the laptop. Um, so that's where that's what happened with me. I don't think I ever had any problems with the volume. The volume was always working. So we're now we're in 1920 by 1080. Let's do full screen. No VSync, unlimited frame rate, DirectX 12. Uh, I set everything to low. I've already set everything to low with 100% render resolution. So this is basically going for max FPS Fortnite gaming. Um, that's what we're doing right now. So competitive, like if you're a competitive Fortnite player, this is what you're looking at. 240 FPS right now, like it's very stuttery, 1% lows always here in the intro island. Um, pretty much so. Because like all these players are going to be popping in and out of existence basically right now. If you want high FPS, use performance mode driver in Fortnite. Performance mode driver in Fortnite. Um, 
Uh, you'll have to explain what you mean. I have everything. Instead of DirectX 12. Oh, performance, lower graphic fidelity. Apply. Restart now. Okay, so we'll turn off DX12. We'll go into performance mode instead of DirectX 12. Thanks for pointing that out, Clark. Um, Effort to Graph says, is it safe to reduce CPU and GPU wattage in manual mode? Yeah, of course. Um, anytime you reduce your CPU or GPU wattage in manual mode, it's all good. But the main thing is um, you're going to basically reduce performance typically. Uh, unless, unless, you know, and this may be the case, it depends. But, um, you know, Unless the laptop was artificially pulling more wattage than it needed and it didn't really improve performance. Like sometimes in dead space, some of these laptops are pulling like 80, 120 watts. You're like, you don't need to pull 120 watts in dead space. It only needs like 60 watts to get max performance or something. So when you reduce the wattage in the i9 chips, it can really uh, pay off, um, giving you nice reduction in temperatures um, well, at the same time, not really hindering your performance very much, if at all. So the strange thing is a restart won't fix it, but shutting it down will. Interesting, Tegas one. That's so weird. Um, a restart won't fix it, but a shutdown will. I would say to, re I'd recommend reporting this issue to ASUS support is what I recommend. Um, if you can with like a video demonstrating it, like being like, okay, you see these buttons, they're not working a restart. See, it doesn't fix it. And then, and then be like, you know, you can easily, uh, you can then be like, tell them, um, see, this is not working. And can you fix this? Like show them, basically demonstrate the bugginess of it and in what way in which it's buggy. It's very important to have a very clear uh, example if you want a company to be able to fix one of these bugs. Otherwise they'll be in the dark about like exactly how to get it fixed. It's interesting, the FPS does not seem very high or much higher than it was in D DX12 mode. Seems about the same actually. But I'm guessing that if you were GPU bound, it won't matter when you go switch between DX12 and performance mode. But if you're CPU bound, or sorry, if you're CPU bound, it won't matter, which we're clearly CPU bound, I think, because we're only 20% GPU utilization right now. Um, uh, there is no frame limit, but in the menus, it limits it down to 120. Oh, no, unless some other settings were changed. So all this, this whole map area is completely shifted around on us. Nothing is the same anymore. So interesting, 148 FPS up here in the sky. We're getting also a few stutters as well. And I'm guessing it's as we're, you know, coming in to load everything. What is this? Oh. It's a mobility gun. Okay, so at least I, oh, sh that scared the crap out of me. Oh, I tamed a wildlife. Okay. Now I'm going to eat some wildlife. Okay, so uh, right now averaging 235 FPS here in Fortnite in performance mode. Ooh, 
okay? So this gives you an idea. I don't know, like, I'm gonna be honest. In DX12 mode, I was... Uh, I was using... I was playing the game, and I was getting over 300 FPS in, in the area I was in. So I'm pretty sure this is the kind of situation where... Oh, there's someone right there. Pretty sure this is the kind of situation where it's going to really depend on what the heck you're doing in the game. You know, if you're... If you are... Uh, if you're playing the game in certain areas, it's going to be like in the 200 FPS range. Maybe some areas only be 150. And then other areas, you'll be in the 300 in Fortnite with this laptop. I am coated in mud. But uh, clearly, there's plenty of moments here where we're getting more than... More than three, uh, more than 240 FPS at least. So, this guy had a lot. What is this? Oh, crap. It just goes right through walls. Well, I'm out of ammo for it now, though. So, uh, the big thing about this display, I think, is that, uh, you know, just being 360 hertz refresh rate is going to make the thing a little bit easier when aiming. Okay, well, now we got a, a real player finally. Well, we gave up our high ground advantage. We're gonna die. This guy managed to get a lot of damage off on us. Oh, we managed to kill him anyway. Okay, that worked out. See, right there we're doing 300 FPS. So there's definitely lots of moments where you're going to be able to push your FPS higher in Fortnite. Than what you might think, uh, given the initial impression. But it's clearly going to vary a lot. Is this a slurp thing? Yeah, okay, let's hit this. Kinda wanna just see a few more areas of the map. And this thing does not move you as fast as the old uh, Attack on Titan grapple thing did. Uh, smacked into that wall. So, um, quite clearly, this is a great overall experience. With, uh, with no complaints, the big thing here is just the FPS is not quite hitting the peak. Right, so um, let's say in theory, like like right now we are CPU bound to the max. So again, if you want higher FPS in Fortnite, what you're gonna need is a higher end CPU, not a GPU. Like this CPU is is our bottleneck right now. Um, oh, okay. Good thing I could skydive. 
Um, because if we couldn't, if we couldn't uh, skydive there, we would have just died probably because I jumped off. <laughs> being shot by someone. I don't like that gun. Oh, this is an SMG, no wonder. We're on a killing spree. Um... Very nice. I mean, this gives you a good idea of the FPS. 235 FPS on average, 73 for a 1% lows. But generally speaking, the frame time is good most of the time with occasional little blips. So in terms of aiming, most of the time it's very, very good with occasional blips as you move to new areas or having to load in textures or whatever. Um, but yeah, so if you want more FPS in Fortnite, I'd say get a better CPU is my recommendation. Does the PlayStation 5 have better performance than a 4060 laptop? I don't know. I have to see. Uh, I have to see what a 40. Uh, I don't. Know. I have to see what a uh, PlayStation 5 does in this game. I gotta imagine that they're both gonna be pushing in the same ballpark of performance, probably in the 200 to 300 FPS range, which is what this is doing right now. 234 on average the whole time. PlayStation 5 only does 120, even on low settings, Slick Rounder. I would have guessed it could do more than that. But do they frame cap it or something to like two, 120? Because I would have thought it'd be able to do a bit more than that. Wow, I can't believe only 30 players are left right now. I'm like tempted to just play this game out, but we really got to move on to the next benchmark. But overall, loving this experience here, but this is perfect. We can go ahead and shoot this guy right wow this guy is really difficult to kill oh we got a real player coming in we're gonna need to get in close this might actually be a bot because of the, how bad he's playing that looks like a real player Pretty sure the wild card guy is the one that killed that dude. We've got another real player over here somewhere. I thought. Maybe it was just the bot. Okay, finally died. Number 26. Very nice. Um, 230 FPS on average. Very good. Overall, overall, very good overall experience. It's just, you know, not your uh, ideal 360 hertz refresh rate experience in terms of maxing the possible refresh rate. But this display is also very responsive, no ghosting at all, which it might be, you know, the 360 hertz refresh rate will slightly display the frames a little bit faster than a 240 hertz. So even if you're not getting the 360 hertz refresh rate, um, out to you, it just can ha have a little bit more opportunity to come to your eyes a little bit quicker being 360 um, and being slightly faster response rate. So uh, overall, good experience, but not much better than a 240 hertz display. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're a Fortnite player, you could save some money and get a 240 hertz display probably and get very similar experience overall. Okay, so our next game is... God of War. Okay. What's up, Slick Rounder? I see you on the stream. Clicks when he plays on console cup on PlayStation 5 was capped at 120 FPS for console. Yes, relative to his 360 hertz PC setup with an i9. Interesting. Huh. Uh, am I going to test Warzone and Cyberpunk? Uh, Warzone, I believe, is going to be bugged. I don't think we're going to be able to do Warzone. I can try loading it for you. 
It would better bench with no build mode. Oh, that's true. The, the additional buildings are going to cause some FPS dipping as they come in and everything. Uh, Slick Rounder, thanks so much for the $2 super chat. Says, uh, love the good work, Gizmo. W, bro. Thanks, man. Appreciate the support. Uh, okay. Let's go into graphics. Ultra settings. Um, God of War, so our first AAA title that we're testing today. Let's see what kind of FPS we're getting. DLSS on quality. No frame generation or ray tracing in this game. Typical FPS for this, um, typical FPS for this game is around 60 to 65 for our average in this benchmark for RTX 4060s. So let's see if we get typical performance. I believe we will, seeing that we're hitting 2490 on the GPU boost clock with 90 watts of power, 45 watts going to that CPU. Um, very hefty CPU wattage in this i5, uh, but our temps are staying in there in good, good ranges. We're definitely getting a little bit of uh, frame time stuttering there. Uh, 67 FPS, 25 for our 1% lows. Gives us excellent all around performance. And if you wanted a more high FPS experience, you can just go in here and go to original graphics settings. And now you're getting in the over 100, in the 120 range, which in a AAA title like this is perfect. It's like, it you, know, you don't really need more than that for a AAA title. So, I mean, if you're a AAA gamer, I don't really necessarily recommend this laptop. Um, to you because you could get maybe a higher color gamut display and get like 165 hertz higher color gamut display which will technically look better um, for this type of game play. Okay, so let's try running Warzone. I don't think Warzone will run because like I said, when I tested it yesterday, it was bugged, but let's give it another shot and see uh, if me verifying the integrity of the Steam. Last time I tried running this, I, I went, it would crashed and I tried running the Steam verification. And I did not try running it again after running Steam verification of the files, so maybe it'll work for us today. But um, Cyberpunk will be next after this. Uh, would you choose the Slim 7i over the M16? Um, probably, but not because. Uh, not because. See, this is what it was doing. It just flashing back and forth constantly, never loading in to the game. This is. It did this for like 10 minutes the other day. So I don't know what's, I'm guessing some kind of driver is like interrupting the Warzone launch. But yeah, I could not get that to work um, in my initial testing with the laptop just to see if all the applications are running. So sadly, no Warzone 2 testing, which I know that's one of the games that I really wanted to test with this laptop too. But that's, that's one of the reasons why I added all the extra esports games for you guys. So Ezra, I was talking about the Alienware M16. You're talking about the Alienware M16, right? Or you're talking about the Zephyrus M16. There's two different M16 laptops this year, so uh, maybe even more than two, but um, those are the two main gaming ones. And between those three laptops, uh, I have not tested the Slim 7i, but the, I know the Zephyrus M16 is quite a, a quite good laptop. If you're looking for a 40, 50, 60, or 70 variant, I know the Slim 7i has received some positive reviews, so probably a good option as well. I'd have to look at the pricing and actual specs to be able to make a better recommendation for you if you were wanting to do it. So anyway, let's go ahead and we are in Ray Tracing Ultra, all right, with DLSS on quality, okay? We've set this up, Ray Tracing Ultra, frame generation enabled, DLSS on quality. This is how I would recommend running this game, most likely if you were to be playing it. So, yeah, Warzone is broken anyway in terms of an optimization perspective. Like in a patch about a week and a half ago, it just went bananas, bad performance. It was weird, it was really bad. So, um, okay, here we are. 84 FPS right now in Cyberpunk 2077. 19 for our 1% low. That's a little bit worrying. I saw one big stutter, but our frame time is looking much better. Our 1% lows are probably going to come up a lot higher. We have another little frame time stutter right there. 
72 degrees on the GPU, 85 watts, hitting that 2590 boost clock, which is the optimal boost clock range, considering we have no overclock applied. If we overclock, applied an overclock, we could probably get close to 2700 megahertz on that GPU. Good, again, good CPU and GPU temps, both staying below 80. Um, I guess CPU kind of spiking up above 80 for a moment there, but 45 watts is a high amount of wattage in a dual GPU CPU usage, 70 watts. Wow, very high CPU wattage for an i5 CPU. And notice we got some frames time stutters there too around the time that was spiking. I'm guessing a CPU demand error, it was, became CPU intensive with all those NPCs on the screen. So 91.1 FPS for our average FPS, which is perfect. That's gonna be a perfectly playable experience on ray tracing ultra settings at 1080p resolution, DLSS on quality. Make sure that it, yes, was set to that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into a little fight in Cyberpunk 2077 and shoot some bad guys in the face. And uh, we will also try uh, like high settings without ray tracing to see what we get on the FPS. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn sound on. Did you all hear about that Arasaka aircraft carrier docked in Night City called Kujira or the whale? Apparently the court figured it wasn't safe in Japanese waters. Afraid Okay, so keep in mind, ray tracing ultra, frame generation enabled. Our 1% lows are looking good so far. So 92 FPS, 32 for a 1% low. Let's go to, uh, let's just do high settings with uh, DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled. All right, so now we're doing 162 FPS. So 150 FPS approximately with high settings. Let's go to uh, low settings with DLSS on balanced. All right, let's see what we get. 197. Our 1% low has not been very good though. That's the only downside. We're getting occasional stutters. Um, I should go ahead and mute this because it keeps... <laughs> yeah, so 185 on low. So in the 90 to 100 range with ray tracing on ultra settings, 150 with high settings and 188 on low. Um, so Obviously very good Cyberpunk 2077 performance. Let's go into Doom Eternal. It's not on the game list. Should we do it anyway? Let's freaking do it. Uh, stuttering and frame time graph, curse one. Yeah, that's right. We did have stuttering and frame time graph bringing our 1% lows down to like 40. And I did visually see stuttering in Cyberpunk 2077. Um, it was mainly when like new NPCs were popping in and out of the display too, which is not great because that's when you most want your FPS to be smooth, right? So that's not, that's not great. I don't know what the reason is, if it's the CPU uh, being causing that or, or what it is. But uh, I mean, it was still an all around good gaming experience, just not perfect because of those occasional little stutters here and there. Um, Cyberpunk does tend to do that pretty often. It Could it have been low VRAM? I don't know. It might have been our VRAM being capped. I don't know. 
uh, I wasn't paying close enough attention to the VRAM situation. Cyberpunk, even at 1080p, can cap it. All right, so our resolution, we need to go up to our full resolution. 16 by 9, yes. There we go. All right, so DLSS on quality. Ray tracing is on enabled. And we're in ultra settings, okay? Ultra settings, DLSS on quality, and ray tracing enabled. We're not on ultra nightmare, which has always been a stuttery mess because of VRAM limitations. But uh, we'll get in here. All right. Okay. All right, I have reset. Our frame time graph is not perfectly smooth. We're getting these occasional blips here and there. I need to do the, um, I need to do the old, uh, chainsaw on them. Okay. So let's say we wanted to try maxing our, we were doing obviously really good FPS. Yeah. Chainsaw action. Um, so let's say we wanted to do, oh, we're doing like 180 ish FPS in that scenario. Uh, let's go ahead and try getting us up to the 360 Hertz refresh rate if we can for fun. Uh, we'll turn off ray tracing and we'll go to low settings. All right. Okay, 260 FPS. Where's my health? Where do I get health at? about to die oh health that was not very much health I think these guys give me health right oh, okay he killed me we got him off his rocker though. Some big frame time stutters there as we were like kind of loading in this new mode for this guy. Some more 1% low stutters. I can't help but think that that's related to the CPU. CPU pulling 55 watts, running at 83 degrees. I don't know. I mean, the gaming experience is pretty good all around right now. So there you go, 300 FPS on uh, low settings.
Honestly, low settings still look pretty dang good. Um, Doom Eternal, really fun shooter. Uh, Alright, let's go ahead and go into Hogwarts. Chainsaw the enemies or glory, kill them to get health, that's right. Can you try locking the FPS to see if the stutters disappear? That's an interesting idea. Um, we're already out of the game, though, for right now. Um, okay, so capping the FPS can help it be smoother in... in um, it sounds like, based on what LSP is saying, capping the FPS can help reduce some of the stutters, maybe. Um, will you be reviewing the 4080 version of the Aorus? Uh, possibly. We'll see. The Aorus 17H, I believe is what you're talking about with the 4080. That is a very similar laptop to this one. Um, I think it has the same display and chassis, but with a 4080 at 150 watts instead of an RTX 4060. And obviously I think a better CPU as well. So you should get better FPS in some of these CPU bound games um, than this laptop. And obviously better, way better G FPS in the GPU bound games. Um, and based on my impressions with this laptop so far, uh, I am very hopeful that that laptop would be good. You know, like I feel, I, I have a feeling that the Aura 17H would be a, a pretty dang good laptop. But from a value perspective, I'm thinking, $2,000 is a great price for it. I wouldn't pay, I think right now it's $2,200. I don't think I would recommend paying $2,200 for it. Maybe, I mean, it is a much better display than the GP. At $2,200, it's competitively priced, but it's not a great price. Great price would be like $2,000 or maybe even a little less than $2,000 for that. Rapture says, shared heat pipe with CPU and GPU. That is right. So when the CPU is being slammed, it's going to ramp up the temps on the, the CPU. So you can see we're on all ultra settings with low, ray tracing enabled. I already pre-set up these settings uh, before the live stream started so we didn't have to restart Hogwarts. The FPS cap is due to some game mechanics are tied to FPS. Some are beneficial to the player while some enemies become absurdly fast at high FPS. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Like, I was noticing that certain... When certain guys did certain things, I saw, like, big FPS dips or whatever. Like, when I when I blew off the leg bottom floating thing on that big guy, we had a big frame time stutter. Okay, Hogwarts and Hogsmeade here. We are very CPU bound. We're also running into maybe our memory limit here at 15 gigs of memory. Um, so... That may cause a little bit of stuttering. And then uh, we already have our texture set to low. We probably could put our textures to medium though in this game um, at this resolution with this, with this graphics card and still not run into uh, texture limitations. Probably, because we're only at 1080p. We do have frame generation enabled right now as well. So, um, so these are our default settings for our initial test, and then we're gonna raise our FPS up by turning off ray tracing. So overall, 84 FPS, 37 for our 1% lows. That's pretty good in Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade being where all the NPCs are and a bunch of textures, very complicated area of Hogwarts. Very good gameplay, very minimal hard stutters on our second run through. Our first run through, of course, did have some stuttering. 78, 34 is, I think, above average for a 4060, uh, especially considering this has an i5 CPU. So now let's go ahead and just kind of optimize. Now that we've done our test exactly how I uh, recommend it, we're gonna go ahead and optimize some settings. We're gonna change our textures to medium, which look a lot better than low textures. Um, and then we turned off ray tracing as well. And uh, now look at us, 120 FPS. Our 1% lows are gonna stutter since it has to reload all the textures in into the game world once again. Beautiful. Okay, so 
Now we're, yeah, this is like 120 FPS. Great gaming experience with a, a couple of stutters um, here in Hogsmeade. If you run outside of Hogsmeade, it'll be a lot better, a lot smoother FPS. Um, Cause there's just, any area with tons of NPCs, basically it's gonna have this kind of stutter. But uh, this is a super fun game. And I really enjoyed my time in Hogwarts when I beat it uh, when it first came out. So, um, so you can see we're running outside of the world now, and our one percent lows. We're now our FPS has gone up. We're at one fifty, one forty, sorry, one thirty, FPS, and our one percent lows are also are not as bad at forty five. So. So yeah, um, this this right now looks very visually pleasing to, to my eye in terms of gameplay. Uh, and we are still on ultra settings, you know. But uh, ultimately, if you want the most optimal gameplay in this, you probably would want to upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs um, for Hogwarts. It's one of the few games where you really, even 1080p wants uh, 32 gigs. Okay, so uh, next up we have Dead Space. Lots of games today. We're doing like 15 different games today. If we can get through all of these. Rapture says, my gigabyte G5 KF, I just repasted in some games. CPU temps are good. And in some, in some like Borderland 3, temp is like 95 and GPU is in high 80s. Wish XTU worked on 12th gen i5. Interesting. You might try... I don't know if you can do manual fans and have like a lower power limit that might work rapture. Um, I believe, uh, what's the undervolting CPU controlling tool that just came out or sorry, it's been around for a long time. It's the competitor to Intel XTU. I can't believe I'm spacing on the name right now, but, uh, they just came out with a new version that's supposed to work with a lot more CPUs. So we're going to do 1080p 360 Hertz refresh rate. Um, ultra preset DLSS on quality. That's correct. Um, I can't believe I'm spacing on this name. Uh, let's go ahead and just, we'll let this, we'll let this kind of bake in for a minute with its temps, 55 Watts on that CPU. It's really slamming that CPU. So expect high amount of uh, CPU utilization. Throttle stop, yeah. Th thanks, LSP. I don't know why I was. Yeah, throttle stop came up with a new version um, recently, and uh, it's supposed to be compatible with more CPUs. I have not tested it yet, but it's one of the things that I am um, excited to test. Okay, so as we're turning, we saw some pretty gnarly one percent low stutters there. We're getting a lot of little choppa choppas. But visually, I'm not really seeing them. That's the weird part about Dead Space. They always have this choppa choppa action, and it still looks very smooth. Um, okay. Hey, I'm I'm impressed that the CPU is doing 55 watts right now, and our temps are still good. 83 degrees on the CPU is excellent for this much wattage going through the system. Um, 70, 72 watts on the GPU. So we are CPU bound a little bit, but it's pretty balanced right now. It was, yeah. So depending on what you're looking at, you're gonna be CPU bound or GPU bound. Um, a bit of a more of a stutter there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do our dead space benchmark now. Here we go. But overall, we're seeing basically power limited CPU is good. Um, CPU bound game with almost 100% GPU utilization is good. Overall, I'm anticipating Dead Space to play pretty dang well without any issues on ultra settings, which is where you want to be, uh, generally speaking, in my opinion. 
uh, with a game like Dead Space. Because, but I don't know. I haven't really tried the low settings that much, I guess. But anyway, it's it's you're getting over 80 FPS in ultra settings. It's going to be a good gaming experience. 25 for a one percent low is not ideal. That's for sure. But Dead Space always struggles with one percent lows for some reason. Um, pretty much always doing this in every single laptop I test with 1% lows being in the 25 to 35 range. Typically, even though I'm not really seeing stutters, like it looks smooth to my eyes when I'm turning the camera and stuff. I don't know if afterburners not reading things correctly or something. I don't know, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. So next game, last of us part one. We will not have uh, shaders preloaded in Last of Us today. Rapture AOW, that's right. Totally forgot about Throttle Stop. Thanks. No, no problem, man. I hope I hope it works. It may not work though, so I might I might try it on the system at some point. Not in this live stream, but if I do an optimization of this laptop, then I probably will. Because if you can raise, if you can use throttle stop to raise the CPU power limit above 55, that can really boost your CPU performance um, when doing multi-core workloads. Because 55 is pretty low for a CPU-only workload. Like right now, we're only at 72 degrees, which is not really that much. All right, so uh, let's go into our display. We're going to go to DLSS on quality. Our graphics is gonna be ultra settings, but our textures on medium. All right. And no shaders today, unfortunately. No shaders, in my experience, mainly just means a lot longer loading time. Um, but it may actually impact performance in the game too. I have not done detailed testing, but I'm just making a note. No shaders pre-rendered for today's test in Last of Us. So, not bad. I just capped it at 72 FPS. I'm old school. I use NVIDIA Inspector. I like it. Been playing around with it for 10 years plus. Okay, gotcha. Hope this new version works with undervolting E cores. Oh, interesting. Did Throttle Stop not do that before? Because Intel XTU has like that separate, um, you know, the separate E core undervolts for the cache and the main E cores. Ooh. 7.35 right now. So when we get done with Last of Us, we have three more games to do. The question is, should I do Shadow of the Tomb Raider and The Witcher 3 or not? And Dying Light 2. Because at this point, I've already done well over 10 games. We've done about... 13 games now in the benchmarks today. Um, I just really like being able to do, I'm gonna do The Witcher 3 for sure. And Dying Light 2. I think we'll skip Shadow of the Tomb Raider just cause um, it's gonna be more useful in future comparisons with other laptops, which is the main, the main reason I wanna make sure to do them. Okay, so as soon as I see the girl, I will, there we go, we'll get our FPS average. So a pretty steady frame time graph with occasional little blips here. Um, overall, 111 FPS. I mean, come on, that's dang good, right? Um, 109, 78 for a 1% low. This is the cinematic. Cinematic was getting, I don't know, like 20 FPS more than actual gameplay, though, so keep that in mind. Um, 70 
9 watts of power, 55 watts to the CPU. So when the CPU is pulling 55 watts, the GPU maxes at 80 watts with this laptop. Uh, we're at 100% GPU utilization as well. All right, so uh, very nice overall FPS. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, it's time to do our um, audio acoustics adjustment. Okay, so in the dashboard, we're going to go to, or sorry, in general, we're going to go to power saving silent mode. All right, and our fans, we're going to go to eco mode. All right. So that's going to put our fans at a very low. We're basically down to 43 decibels, right? Approximately uh, when we were doing it before. And now I'm going to turn the speakers up. All right. Okay, so I have refreshed the frame rate counter. We're doing only 55 watts to the GPU right now. Our CPU only 15 watts. We are being CPU bound pretty hard right now. Our GPU not really giving us the full wattage because of how CPU bound we are in silent mode. Um, but the FPS is still extremely playable at 70 FPS, 36 for our 1% low. And our temps are also excellent. We are now in uh, basically gameplay engine mode now. Um, you can see the frame time graph not as stable now. So in silent mode here right now, doing 47, 42. This is not good enough, in my opinion, right now in silent mode. We're going to need more juice. I think the issue is the CPU. CPU only pushing 15 watts is just not enough. So uh, let's go to dashboard. Um... We could go gaming mode and just leave it on eco fan mode. So maybe it'll be not as loud. Let's see how that is now. That is better, but not great still. Still getting some stutters. Like not super smooth FPS. All right, gaming mode with turbo fans. Interesting. So when we switch to turbo fans, look at that. Our power limits rise up big time. And bam, our FPS so much better. So you're going to need to be in tur You can't be at least in eco mode. Eco mode in the fan profile really caps, kneecaps your system. And now this is perfectly playable again. Uh, let's go to um, power. All right, so power mode. Our temps are going to spike because the fans are not going to be ramping up right now. Power mode is like auto fans, but we get high performance. So if you want quieter fans and not max fans, this power mode is the way to go. We're going to, until the fans ramp up and we get a new equilibrium established with our thermals, our temps are going to spike though. Our te it's going to be temporary. These, these high temps are just temporary. Okay. Um, right now our CPU is ramping. Our, our, our fans are not at 100%. They're at 91%. So they're not quite as loud as they could be. And uh, once the temps come down a bit, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a little bit quieter fans, like 80% fans or something like that. Okay, but for now, 
let's just go ahead and keep going here. So, you game like Last of Us, you really need more CPU juice going to that Intel CPU if you want to be able to really take advantage of the performance of the laptop. Because otherwise, the frame time stutters were so bad at 15 watts of power. Our temps are coming down there in the low 80s, high 70s right now. Um, which is obviously much better. We're not even close to thermal throttling. Uh, and our performance is quite good as well. So I like that there's options here. The fans are not as loud, but I got to say that if you're after a quiet system that can game really well, the current fan profiles are not... Maybe if you do a custom fan profile, you could get it to be better. But right now the fans are pretty loud. Maybe they'll quiet down here now that our temps are in the mid 70s. So our, our temps are in the mid 70s. Our fan, our fan, oh, fans are finally starting to come down to the 80%. Okay, that's quieter now. Interesting. Fans just got a little bit louder again. I don't love the, I don't love how this fan. Oh, I've never been over here. You can look at his phone. Huh. Yeah, I've never seen that before. I played this section of the game so many times. The amount of detail they put into this game is just incredible. I gotta say, the speakers are pretty underwhelming as well. Like, like I'm on max volume right now with the speakers, and it doesn't. I can. I can't hear it that well. Um, I cannot hear it very well over the sound of the other stuff. So let's go back into the Realtek audio console. Let's confirm that we're at max speakers. And yeah, we're at max right now let's let me just try changing it to another one see if that helps no it's not much help uh, our temps here are good our performance is pretty good uh the temps are maybe just a little bit higher than i ideally love but they're in a good range considering we're not on max fans but let's go ahead and pop the system uh well we can move into the witcher 3 now Oh, sorry, Dying Light 2 is next. And uh, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we tested that. That really helps us get a better handle on the performance and the fan noise and uh, what you can expect. And realistically, if you're after a quiet gamer, I don't think I can recommend this laptop uh, to the quiet, sensitive, noise people out there. Um... Well, uh, well, put it this way. It's going to depend. It's going to depend on the game. If it's a CPU-focused game, like Last of Us really wants a lot of CPU performance, that's when you're going to run into a lot of 1% low stutters with only 15 watts of power. That's just not enough. Um, I wish there was a nice middle ground of, like, say, 25 or 30 watts or something. Um, so there may be a way to get a nice, quiet profile, like 45 to 48 decibels, and still have enough... CPU performance, but in general, I think this is a much better laptop when under a headphone gaming experience, partially because these speakers are pretty underwhelming with the gameplay audio. So we're ready to benchmark high quality ray tracing, DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled. Let's see what we get for our FPS at 1080p. After this, we'll do The Witcher 3, and then we'll summarize everything we have found out about this Aura 7 gaming laptop. So currently doing about 120 FPS during the opening scene. Usually it goes down a little bit from there, um, but still excellent performance. Um, can't pay attention to our 1% lows because it always stutters between 
loading the different scenes. Generally speaking, uh, the frame time graph being pretty smooth with occasional little blips here and there, um, hitting about 90 watts of performance, 85 watts of performance on that GPU being mostly GPU bound, but the CPU just providing enough performance to make us GPU bound. We are definitely pushing that CPU pretty hard at the same time. So I, I think this is a pretty good pairing, this i5 CPU with this RTX 4060. In terms of gaming performance, you're at least getting close. Like you're getting close to being GPU bound, at least in these GPU bound games. Um, you're not underperforming with the, the GPU at least, which is good. That's, in, that's important because you know we've, we've seen that in the past where the GPU is just way out overpowered compared to the CPU. And then you're like, why did it's just holding back the GPU so badly? But in this scenario, I don't really think that we're seeing that. So that's good. A hundred and thirty seven FPS is, you know, like averaging right now 117. We'll see what the actual, uh, you know, the, the Last of Us benchmark tells us what they get here in a moment. But 117.47 for our median FPS, very, very smooth. Um, min FPS being 87 shows you that our frame times generally are pretty dang good. Um, not bad at all. Let's go into The Witcher 3. And you know, that's with ray tracing on ultra, right? So like this thing is playing esports games. A lot of the esports games over 240 FPS, some of them 300 to 400 FPS, maybe even more depending on the game, you know? Um, and, and then the AAA titles we're seeing still very playable FPS in the 60 to 120 range, even with highest settings with ultra ray tracing. So that's good. Um, let's see what we get in The Witcher 3. Witcher 3 being a very demanding game when you have everything turned on. Generally speaking, I would not recommend probably playing with ray tracing on because I think it actually makes the game look a little bit worse. Um, So uh, LSP says throttle stop can work, can't undervolt E cores, but it can, throttle stop can undervolt the, uh, I guess the P cores to help stop throttling in CPU intensive multiple emulators and game loads. It's so interesting, LSP, that you run so many things. I, yeah, it's like your job, right? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> to run all these things at once, a hobby job or something. All right. Well. Okay. Getting close. We're getting close. Last game. Wow, we made it through, I think, four, 13 or 14 games today. Bonkers. Bonkers, bonkers. Let's go ahead and see what we get for our settings. Let's set it to Ray Tracing Ultra to start with. All right. DLSS on quality. Display. 1080p frame generation is enabled. All right, so. All right, 80 FPS range. Witcher 3 being a typically very stuttery game, especially in new zones. Once everything gets loaded in, usually it's not as stuttery though. All right, here we go. Uh, 79 for our 1% low. I am seeing a bit of judder though. Like it doesn't seem as smooth or as good for some reason. I don't know. It seems like frame generation might be bugged right now or something. I don't know. Normally I can't see it at all. The performance is very good right now though. 88 FPS, 39 for our 1% lows. Um, so 
I mean, now it seems to be better. I don't know. It seems like when I was running through the city there, though, it was not that good. All right, so 88, 43 for a 1% lows. Interesting. Not bad at all. If we go into our graphic settings, flip ray tracing off, and take a look again, 150 FPS. Very smooth gameplay. Interesting. Our 40, 43 for our 1% lows is not ideal, but this is very good gameplay. Um, you're going to have no problems playing The Witcher 3. Uh, our VRAM is not maxed. Our regular RAM is not maxed. If you wanted to go for high, high FPS gaming, let's see what we get on performance mode. Let's try performance and uh, low settings. I'm actually curious to see. All right, so 240. Is there a frame cap at 240? No, there's not, 250, okay, so. Uh, wow, 240 FPS right now in The Witcher 3 on low settings. This game still looks pretty dang good on low settings, by the way. But like, there's certain things that don't look as good. Like These guys are kind of loading in and they're pretty low resolution a lot of the textures don't look as good on low settings so I, I wouldn't really recommend low settings but i would recommend playing this game without ray tracing if you can so like if you do like ultra and then you do i would do dlss on quality as well and there we go it's still there seems to be some kind of judder going on with the display. I don't understand what's going on there. Let me see if turning on and off any setting. So we are in full screen. V-Sync is not enableable. We have frame generation on, that's probably, that's why. I don't know. Let's try turning off frame gen, turning on V-Sync. I think that's better. Yeah, I think that's better. I don't know. Yeah, that's better. I'm pretty sure. So this is, it's weird. You know, we're still getting a hundred. What settings are we on right now? For some reason, like normally I do not, I do not experience that. So we're on ultra DLSS on quality, 1080p unlimited DLSS frame gen is off right now. So we're doing all real frames. And uh, 90 FPS, 100 FPS still. And our 1% low is much better. Look at our frame time graph is much better. I don't know, for some, something's going on right now. I wonder if it's just Frame gen causing the problem right now? Yeah, frame gen is messed up right now. It's causing these weird inconsistent frame times, making the game not look good for some reason. It's the first time I've seen this, and I'm pointing it out, honestly, because this it's doesn't look good. Um, not sure why though. This looks this looks much better. And you can see the frame time graph is also much better. Um, so I don't know, that's odd behavior. Not sure. Probably just a driver update or software update would fix that, is my guess. Something's going on there, though. Okay. It's time to do the summary. And we can uh, make this laptop quieter as well. So we'll just do normal. There we go. All right. What are the pros, cons, reasons to buy this laptop, reasons to not buy this laptop? Let's talk about it all. Um, I'm gonna zoom the camera out just a little bit more so they can get the whole laptop in. There we go. Okay, so um, 
top deals versus the competition, this thing has some great value for the money, considering it's a 300, it's one of the cheapest 360 hertz displays out there. There's technically one $50 cheaper, but it has an RTX 4050, it's another Aorus laptop. This one's way better than the Aorus 15 for the money. This has a, a more RAM, um, More RAM, this has an RTX 4060 instead of 4050. That's a big upgrade. Uh, and then, I, I don't know, I like this chassis. I like this overall design this has. Windows Hello on this was a big surprise when I pulled this out. I was not expecting Windows Hello. That's a huge value add at 1149, like a nice premium feature to have. Sadly, I do not believe this is per key RGB lighting. On the keyboard, it is only a three zone backlight lighting. Um, but we had some nice premium features on the inside. When we, we took this thing apart, it wasn't too hard to take apart. You got upgradable RAM. You could slap in 32 gig sticks if you wanted. You got an open M.2 slot, so you got some nice upgradability. A 99 watt hour battery in here, very rare to see a 99 watt hour battery in a budget mid-range laptop. Usually they're in like the 80 watt hour range, but sometimes People undercut the, those down to like 60 or 50 or 70 watt hours in the budget-ish laptops. And to see a 99 watt hour battery at 1149 is also very rare. So I love to see these premium features that Aorus are including in an entry budget range-ish laptop. I guess, what do, what's, what's this? Low mid-range, I guess, is probably what I would officially classify this. Over $1,000, under 1200 that's like high budget, low mid range, right in that range. So um, key, uh, let's go in order. Power adapter, got a nice 10 foot range on it, 240 watt power adapter, Chaconi, uh, good all around power adapter, no issues. Uh, the power adapter does sit here uh, on the side, could block the fan exhaust or the ports, depending on which angle you flip the power adapter. You can also make it go up, which is probably what I'd recommend doing if you do get this laptop. Now, um, the ports on this laptop are pretty bad. They're not good ports. They're one of the worst port selections in terms of numbers of ports that we've seen in any gaming laptop so far in 2023, especially for a 17 inch laptop. This is very minimal ports selection, um, but Basically what that means, so you've got a USB-C, two USB-A's, an HDMI 2.1, and a mini display port. That's it, right? A network port. You got a network port too. Literally only three and then four. So seven total ports. Usually laptops are having like nine ports. Um, and the fact that there's no Thunderbolt 4 support here is also a little bit of a bummer. So that means no eGPU support down the line. Um, and it's a USB-C 3.2. Now there is a mini display port, which helps with external monitors and HDMI 2.1, which so the ports on here are high quality ports aside from the lacking of a Thunderbolt 4 port. So if you're gonna get this laptop, you're probably gonna wanna get a USB-C dock to, uh, to be able to use it with an external monitor, keyboard, mouse, and all that, um, and all your peripherals that you're gonna wanna use with it. Um, you, if you don't have that many peripherals, you could also be just fine, you know. No big deal. If you only need two USB A's and one USB C, then this laptop will be fine. But like me, I am like almost always using three USB A's on my laptop um, on the fly because I that's what I use for live streaming and everything. So I really need three USB A's as a minimum. So this would not work for me, but it's gonna depend on you and your use case, what you need. You could try to use some kind of like internal Bluetooth uh, 5.0 mouse or something. So you don't have to use a one of the ports for a mouse. Uh, there's some ways you can play around with it to, to deal with these, this port situation, but it's not ideal. Notice the keyboard also turns off its backlight after 30 seconds. I did not see anywhere in the settings to change that. Uh, the keyboard, speaking of the keyboard, the backlight could definitely be brighter. One of the big cons of this laptop, the, the keyboard's not that bright. It's only a three zone backlight, but it does look good in the dark. It's very easy to see every key, read every key, all the secondary functions are lit up. That's excellent. And the keyboard itself has a great layout and great functionality and a good key feel. It's not mechanical, it's a chiclet style, better than a membrane keyboard in my opinion. Um, and it's, yeah, good all around layout, not perfect. There's definitely some ways that they could have improved the layout. Um, but I've liked the Aorus keyboards for a long time and I've used them extensively when I owned and used Aorus laptops as my main laptop for several years. Um, and this is still the same keyboard layout as that. Um, 
Webcam quality was very low detail, but it's Windows Hello enabled. The display, 342 nits, and I'm doing this all off the top of my head, 920 to one contrast ratio. I believe those are numbers are correct. Very good display, 360 Hertz refresh rate. And we did see in multiple esports games today, actually being able to hit 360 FPS with this laptop. So if you're a Valorant player, CSGO player, um, those games in particular definitely can hit it. League of Legends could hit it. Uh, Dota 2 cannot hit because CPU limitations give us about 185 FPS, basically, um, at least in a mid-range. Uh, looking at the creeps fighting in mid is about 185 FPS, even on low settings. So you can run Dota 2 on ultra settings, get 185 FPS, still very good. Um, Battle Bit Remastered, we saw in certain situations, 400 plus FPS, but on average, I think we we're doing like 250 ish on the FPS there. Um, Fortnite, we were seeing in like the 230, 240 FPS, but in certain situations in certain areas of Fortnite, upwards of over 300 FPS. So there are certain situations in Fortnite where you're gonna be able to take advantage of the 360 Hertz refresh rate. But most importantly, regardless of whether you're actually displaying 360 FPS to the display at one time, you are getting a very fast response rate. And even if you're doing 240 FPS, you're technically um, 360, might give you a slightly faster window to display the image. Um, but a, a really, really fast 240 hertz refresh rate will be very competitive with this anyway. So if the games you play typically don't get more than 240 FPS, like Apex Legends, I think we were doing around 240-ish FPS on low settings here. Um, a Q, like a, like a, a, a 240 hertz refresh rate display won't make that big of a difference between a 240 and a 360. Plus, Apex Legends is capped to 300 FPS. Many games are capped to 200, 250, um, or 300 FPS. So you really got to know that your game that you want to play can really take advantage of the 360 hertz display if you really want to make this worth it, right? Like versus, say, buying a QHD resolution display instead. Um, Right, let's talk thermals for a moment before we talk about AAA gaming. Thermally, this thing um, on Max fans, great thermals overall. But when we went into silent mode, the fan noise was, was very minimal. But in Last of Us, it was not giving the CPU enough juice to achieve playable frame rates. So we had to go back to a higher power mode to get playable frame rates. And in some of the recent reviews I've done, like on the Nitro 16, the Strix G16, uh, we saw a Omen, the Omen 16, all of those games, uh, all of those gaming laptops have pretty competitive-ish hardware, but they have Ryzen CPUs and some of those. Um, and those CPUs and GPUs are able to actually game really well and low wattage uh, and low fan noise. Uh, so like Last of Us was perfectly playable. Uh, even when the laptop was very silent. This laptop, you'd probably want to use headphones with anyway, because the onboard speakers, which we're about to get to the speaker test anyway, the onboard speakers are not very good for displaying the game audio. It was weird. Like in the music test, we had much better audio coming from the speakers when we had the, the EQ dialed up, very loud volume, a bit tinny, not super clear, uh, and not super amazing bass necessarily, but the high volume made me give this thing like an 8.2 uh, and then bump it to 8.4 because of the high volume. So it was pretty good speakers in the music test, but when I was actually playing games, I could not hear the game audio very well over the fan noise, especially when under max fans. Um, and then we couldn't get playable frame rates on the silent mode. So really, if you're, you're gonna wanna be a headset gamer for this laptop, mainly or just be okay with having mediocre audio quality for your games, or use an external speaker system. You could use that too. An external speaker system, like with a you know USB-C dock or audio out, that's another possible solution. Um, but yeah, onboard noise balance versus speaker quality versus fan noise was not very good. Cinematic R23, only about 12,000, also not very good. Below average compared to most of the laptops this year. Um, 
And Time Spy was very good. Time Spy, we had good gaming CPU performance and GPU performance, 10,500, I believe, with no overclock at all. Probably could push this thing close to 11,000 with an overclock, maybe a little bit more. Um, all right, let's talk AAA gaming performance, Cyberpunk 2077, God of War, Hogwarts, Dead Space. Great performance in basically all of the all of the AAA games had great performance, but uh, if you want high FPS gaming performance, Doom Eternal, all these games, you're pretty much going to want to turn down a few settings. Uh, maybe even go to like medium or low settings if you want high frame rate FPS, like over 100, 150, 200 FPS, which this laptop can actually do that if you go down to medium or low settings, which is really cool to see. Um, at $1,149, right? Like that's like kind of like the part that's like, like in my mind, I'm thinking this is more like a $1,500 laptop given the premium s special features that this has. But but yeah, so what are the anti-premium special features that this has? Well, this is, I believe, an all plastic build, which is, you know, it, it, it feels high quality. Like the material feels good and it feels fairly rigid with minimal flex. The hinge is pretty strong. It could be a little stronger, only a little bit of wobble. Um, and most importantly, I love the design of the minimal bezel of this laptop. It is such a minimal bezel on this laptop. It's mind blowing to me how minimal bezel this is. The design, it makes the whole thing like, like that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with my Blade 18. The Blade 18 I have has almost no bezel to it. And so does this laptop. It has the same ethos in terms of design, making this a 17 inch laptop that has a much smaller form factor, much narrower form factor um, than almost all the other laptops for this year. Even like 15 inch laptops have a deeper profile this year uh, than this guy because of how narrow bezel this guy is. Uh, it's not a small laptop by any means. It is also about an inch thick the display being the thickest part of the laptop, which is kind of, or, you know, almost as thick as the bottom of the laptop. It's very odd, but I'm guessing that's because of the 360 hertz display um, on this laptop being, must be a thicker panel or require thicker mounting or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, I mean, from a esports gaming perspective on a budget, I feel like this is a great option for a gamer that's not an esports gamer, there are a few drawbacks here, right? Like you don't have the premium speaker quality. Um, you don't have G-Sync, which if you're a AAA gamer, G-Sync becomes more important because oftentimes you're going to go to those lower um, FPS targets where screen tearing is more likely to occur. Um, and then um, what else? So the, fan, the fact that this doesn't have a, a great balance of fan noise and gaming performance in CPU bound games is a problem, I think. You might be able to wiggle around that with doing custom uh, fan profile curves though uh, in the software. Did not spend enough time with this laptop. Might still be able to salvage the fan noise versus performance issue, especially depending on the game. If it's a very GPU bound game, it should be no problem. Um, yeah, no, I mean, if. If you're an esports gamer, this is probably one of the top laptops to consider under $1,200. Probably my number one pick for an esports gamer under $1,200. Bucks. Like, it's excellent for an esports gaming laptop. Certain games, like I said, for Warzone 2, that focus on CPU, multi core performance, or Battlefield 2042, those types of games not really going to perform very well on this machine because it doesn't have very many P cores, only four P cores. So, Really depends on which esport game you're playing, but most esports games only use one or two threads um, or minimal threads. And this thing has excellent performance when you're only using a handful of threads. Only has four P cores anyway. So um, yeah. And then the GPU, obviously plenty enough juice to play esports games. And many of the games, many of the esports games are playable at over 300 FPS. So, so yeah, great value for an esports gamer here in my hands. Phenomenal value for an esports gamer. Um, but I would say for a triple A gamer, I don't think I would, this would not be my top pick, probably not even in my top five for a triple A game. Well, maybe, I mean, this, like I said, this has a number of premium features to it that a lot of other gaming laptops at the $1,200 price point don't have like 
uh, you know, this, this does have a mux switch, which is important for esports, but more importantly, this does have a uh, windows. Hello, minimal bezel design, good thermals all around, but it's not for this person that is fan noise sensitive, uh, not for the person who craves having awesome speakers or needs an awesome webcam. Um, I want to mention that the trackpad, the glass trackpad is also above average for the price point. Um, a lot of laptops around the $1,200 price point this year have plastic touchpads, and this is a glass trackpad, so that's also excellent. Yeah. I think that covers everything. Let me check chat and see if chat has any questions. Um, this is not a 1440p display. It's a 1080p display. Uh, still a lot more ports than what you find in non-gaming laptops. I guess that's true. This is a good amount of ports uh, versus non-gaming laptops. Sunrise says, how would you compare this to something like the 2021 Zephyrus G14? I'm rocking one of those right now and wonder if this is well worth the upgrade. Game-wise, game I primarily play Warzone and Apex. So if you primarily play Warzone, I don't think I'd recommend this laptop because there's only four performance cores on this laptop and Warzone loves having high P cores. I'm guessing this laptop is going to only get 60 to 80 FPS in Warzone. Um, where if you go with a uh, better CPU with a 4050 or 4060, you're going to get you know, closer to 90 to 100 FPS in Warzone 2. Um, in Apex, this is going to be an excellent laptop, though, because Apex doesn't really need that many P cores, right? So it's just going to depend on which game you're playing. But if you're a Warzone 2 gamer, I'd skip this laptop um, for one with more CPU cores and a better, higher quality. Focus a bit more on getting like say a 240 hertz or even a 165 hertz high quality display and a better CPU. Uh, Cause Warzone, no matter what you do, like even the very best CPU, uh, even the very best CPUs cap out at like 150 FPS in Warzone 2. Uh, like the i9 13980HX did 150 FPS and the Ryzen 9 7945HX only did 135 FPS for Warzone 2. So Warzone 2 is like a special case type of esports game. Um, where you don't really, you'll never, you'll never get with a laptop like 300 FPS gaming with Warzone 2. It just won't happen even on low settings. So, um, okay. I think that covers everything. Thank you so much for everyone that stopped by the live stream. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this and consider subscribing if you want to see more gaming laptop content. I'll have more, uh, I'll have more laptop videos for you soon. I'm gonna to try to do the Legion Pro 7i optimization video tomorrow afternoon. And then I have the Lenovo Lock and the Lenovo 5 Slim coming in for unboxing reviews early next week. So uh, more videos will be dropping as well. More summary and uh, update videos and comparison videos will be coming later this week as well. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out.